Welcome to Fictional Fortress. I invite you to join me in exploring the vast tapestry of anime inspired tales, so today we are gonna see. What if Naruto secretly son of Voldemort? Dot? Move on to the video. Deep within a large underground library hidden in the land of rice fields, a boy of about 11 sat reading a letter that had arrived for him earlier that morning. The boy had long straight blood red hair and golden eyes with slits for pupils, he was wearing a pair of black shinobi pants, a dark grey shirt, and a black odo headband around his waist like a belt. This boy was one Naruto Uzumaki, the son of the snake San and Medusa, and the dark wizard Lord Voldemort. Though he was given birth by Kishina Uzumaki, the Kyubi Jinchuriki, which was how he got the name Uzumaki. Nearly 13 years ago Voldemort had arrived on the hidden continent that housed the elemental nations, the continent being hidden from the rest of the world by the Rakuto Senen, he had heard about the shinobi in their ability with Chakura, which was an ancient and lost form of magic, exclusive to the elemental nations. After a week in the elemental nations Voldemort had met Medusa and became allies rather quick, seeing as they had a lot in common. After a year in the elemental nations Voldemort had left, but not before Medusa managed to get some of his DNA and used it to fertilize an egg which she put inside of Kishina, seeing as she could no longer give birth. The night Naruto was born the Kyubi was released from Kishina before the fourth could seal it inside of Naruto. A year after Naruto was born a man named Avery arrived in the elemental nations and informed Medusa that Voldemort had been defeated by an infant named Harley Potter. Over the next few years Naruto was raised inside of Konoha by Avery and one of Medusa's spies named Kabuto, Avery taught Naruto about the magical world outside of the elemental nations, while Kabuto trained Naruto in the shinobi arts, he even managed to get Naruto the shadow clone jutsu to help speed up his training. On Naruto's eighth birthday, he and Kabuto had fled Konoha after Avery was had killed a drunken villager that had attacked Naruto. Though not without a captive, namely the Ino Yamanaka, the heir to the Yamanaka clan. Currently Naruto let out a small sigh as he re-read the letter he had been brought earlier that morning. The letter was for Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Headmaster. Albus Dumbledore. Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sork, CHF, Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Conft, of Wizards. Dear Mr. Yuzumaki, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on 1 September. We await your albino later than 31 July. Yours sincerely. Minerva McGonagall. Deputy Headmistress. Second page. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uniform. First year students will require. 1. Three sets of plain work robes. Black. 2. One plain pointed hat, black, for day wear. 3. One pair of protective gloves, dragon height or similar. 4. One winter cloak, black, with silver fastenings. Please note that all pupils' clothes should carry name tags. Course books. All students should have a copy of each of the following. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1, by Miranda Goshik, A History of Magic by Bathilda Bagshot, Magical Theory by Adelbert Waffling, A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Americ Switch, 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Felita Spore, Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander, The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Tremble. Other Equipment, 1 Wand, 1 Cauldron Pewter, Standard Size 2 1 Set Glass or Crystal Files, 1 Telescope, 1 Set Brass Scales. Students may also bring, if they desire, an owl or a cat or a toad. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed their own broomstick. Yours sincerely. Lucinda Thumsonical Pocus, Chief Attendant of Witchcraft Provisions. Well, I was wondering when this would arrive, Naruto said, a smirk slowly appearing on his face before he glanced over his shoulder at his three followers, the first was Ino Yamanaka, she had long platinum blonde hair and green eyes, though she had her headband around her neck like a necklace, the second was one Teaya Yuzumaki, she had red hair and brown eyes, she was wearing more a tan tunic with black shorts and standard black shinobi sandals, the third was Karen Yuzumaki, she had red hair and red eyes, she was wearing a lavender uniform uniform that exposes her navel, short black shorts, and long black thigh-high stockings with black sandals. Karen, can you go tell my mom that it's finally arrived? Karen nodded her head before vanishing in a cloud of smoke. So you plan on going to this Hogwarts? Teaya asked reading the letter over his shoulder. 
Yeah, I've been going over everything mom has managed to get me from over there, from spell books to brooms, I've been preparing for this for the last few years, he smirked, looking at the letter again. I've even managed to get into contact with a number of Death Eaters, who were kind enough to send me a number of advanced spell books. It was good learning material, Eno said reading over one of the books on the dark arts. After leaving Kanoha, Naruto discovered that every shinobi clan had a magical core but was inactive thanks to their use in chakra, so after a little work, Naruto had figured out how to activate Ino's magical core followed by Karen, Teaya, and his other followers. Yeah it was, and it will help us blend in at Hogwarts, Naruto smirked before seeing his mom and Kabuto walk into the library. Good morning mom. Good morning Naruto Karen tells me that you received your Hogwarts acceptance letter, Medusa smirked as she spotted the letter in her son's hands, Medusa was a tall woman with long straight black hair and golden eyes with slits for pupils, she was wearing a pair of plain grey garbs with black pants and a thick purple rope belt tied in a large knot behind his back and blue tomo shaped earrings, yeah, it arrived a little bit ago. Though I was rather surprised that it found me, Naruto said, handing her the letter, as he stood up and grabbed two sword from the spot next to his previous location. Well then, perhaps we should decide on a meeting place and send back your reply, said Kabuto with a small smile. Kabuto had shoulder-length silver hair and dark eyes, he was wearing a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white undershirt, dark purple fingerless gloves with armored plates on the back of the hand, a white cloth waistband worn at an angle, dark purple pants, blue sandals, and a shuriken holster on his right leg, sound like a plan to me, with that Naruto threw a kunai towards a map on the far wall before writing down a letter telling the person who was being sent to get in, that they would be in Yugakur in a week's time. Once the letter was written Naruto headed to the entrance of the base and tied the reply to a waiting all's leg before heading down to pack. Quirinus Quirrell stood nervously at the entrance to the village of Yugakur, as he waited on the boy from the elemental nations that his master seemed very interested in meeting. Quirrell was a rather plan man of average height with brown eye and a purple turban wrapped around his head, like most wizards he was wearing a plain traveling cloak. After his travels in Romania, where he had met his master, Lord Voldemort, who was in some form of spirit now, not fully dead yet not alive either, he had returned to Hogwarts in order to prepare for the coming school year. Before being asked by Dumbledore to go to the elemental nations to collect a four children from there, that would be attending Hogwarts this year, upon hearing the request, Voldemort had become very interested in this child for some reason. I wonder why Master is so interested in this child Corel wondered as he looked around before he spotted the boy he was supposed to meet walking towards him with another older boy behind him. The boy he was supposed to meet, Naruto, was rather tall for his age, with long straight waist length, blood red hair tied in a ponytail and golden eyes with slits for pupils, he was wearing a pair of black shinobi pants and a black sweater under a long black cloak. Are you the professor that is supposed to take us to get our school supplies? Naruto asked in a tone that demanded an answer causing Quirrell to shudder. That's right, I am Professor Quirrell, and I'm the defense against the dark arts professor at Hogwarts. Quirrell stuttered out as Naruto glanced over him with an unimpressive look. I see, and the spirit attached to you is? Quirrell looked shocked at the fact that Naruto could sense his master. Let me speak with the boy. Quirrell nodded his head and began to unwrap his turban. Getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto, before his eyes widened in surprise at the sight of the second face on the back of Quirrell's head. Greetings Naruto, it is good to meet you, I am Lord Voldemort, the face, now identified as Voldemort said. Getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto, it is good to know that Medusa's experiment for someone to have both a magical core and chakra was successful. Yeah, mom's pretty good when it comes to that sort of stuff, Naruto shrugged glancing at Kabuto who nodded before leaving. Good, then you will be able to help me regain my body, Naruto raised an eyebrow in slight amusement before smirking, he could help him, but he would do it on his terms, sure, I'll help, but it will be on my terms, Voldemort narrowed his eyes at the boy before slowly nodding, as long as the boy helped him regain his body, he didn't much care, good, then shall we be going, we really need to get our things before the school year starts. After re-wrapping his head Quirrell placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder before, with a loud bang, the two vanished before reappearing outside of an old looking bar, that none of the muggles appeared to be able to see. Upon entering the bar Naruto followed Quirrell over to a bar stool where they sat and waited for a half-giant by the name Hagrid, who was going to be helping him get his school supplies, along with a girl named Harley Potter, 
which caused Naruto to chuckle a little, the girl that defeated his father was going to be shopping with him, that was just too funny. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he watched the people in the bar all crowd around Harley, making her real nervous. Harley was a rather small girl with messy, shoulder-length jet black hair and bright green eyes, she was wearing a pair of baggy jeans that looked way too big for her, and an old-looking stripped shirt that looked like it had once belonged to a whale. Sighing, seeing as it would be a while before Harley was free from the crowd, Naruto put his hand in the ram sign, in a large cloud of smoke, Harley was replaced by a log. Sorry about that everyone, all of the patrons of the bar, turned to see Naruto with his arm around the waist of a blushing Harley. But you see, we're kind of in a hurry, we need to get our school supplies, and we can't really do that with all of you crowding around the girl like a bunch of idiots. Smirking at the twitch in the eyes of many of the people there, Naruto led Harley over to Hagrid, whom he had met while the girl was being swamped by people, and followed the giant of a man out the back of the bar, his arm still wrapped around Harley. Um, thank you, Naruto chuckled as he released the girl. No problem, I'm Naruto by the way, Naruto Yuzumaki, Harley Potter. The girl gained a small pinkish hue when Naruto gave her a one of his patented fox-like grins. Harley was trying to hide a small smirk as she stood next to Naruto who was leaning on Hagrid trying to regain his balance after they had left the wizarding bank ringgits. I am never ridding on one of those carts again, Naruto muttered as he finally regained his balance, throwing a glare back at the bank. It wasn't that bad, Harley lost all control of herself as Naruto turned his glare onto Hagrid, how slowly back down from the boy who barely reached his chest. You have no right to comment on that. Seeing as you were about to barf when we got off as well, he accused, causing the giant man to look the other way. So, um, Hagrid, where do we go first? Harley asked trying to get everything back on track once she had gained control of her laughter. Right, first stop is Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions, he said, leading them to their first stop. Grateful for the distraction from the boy from the Elemental Nations, Professor Dumbledore had told him about the nations and a little about how it worked. According to him, Naruto was considered an adult there and was strong enough to take out a true giant by himself. A short time later the three found themselves inside a shop full to the brim with robes as a short witch walked up to them, before dragging both Naruto and Harley over to a pair of stools next to another boy, who was already being fitted for his robes. Hello, Hogwarts too? The boy asked in a snide and stuck-up tone that reminded Naruto of the Hyuga and Uchiha clans. No, we're here acting as human mannequins. Harley's cheeks puffed out as she attempted to hold in her laughter. Amusing, any clue what house you'll be in? I know I'll be in Slytherin, he said with a smug smirk on his face. Then you should probably get used to seeing me, since with my parentage, I know I'll be in Slytherin too. That got a raised eyebrow from the boy, and a curious look from Harley. Really? And who are your parents? The boy flinched as Naruto turned his eyes onto him, both of them were glowing slightly. That is none of your concern, just know that if you cross me, I will kill you where you stand. Before the boy could reply Madame Malkin informed him and Harley that they were finished and could leave. After paying for their things, Hagrid led them to all of the other shops that they would need to visit after getting their robes. They got their books and potion equipment followed by a few miscellaneous things before heading to one of their final stops. Ollivanders, this seems like an interesting shop, Harley said as her and Naruto entered, trying to lighten the gloomy mood of the shop. I guess, Naruto said entering the shop behind her glancing around, he could sense all of the magical energy flowing around them. I suppose I should take that as a compliment, Harley jumped as both kids whirled around to face an old man standing behind them. Greetings, welcome to Ollivanders, I've been expecting you too, though I never expected you to arrive together, very curious indeed, now ladies first. Nervously, Harley stepped forward as Ollivander pulled out a tap measurer, which began taking her measurements on its own, getting a small blush from Naruto, as it wrapped around her chest. Enough, the tap measurer stopped at the old wand maker's words as he moved over to her with a long box, which held a wand for her. Try this one, Holly, nine and three-fourths inches with a unicorn tail hair for the core. Harley took the wand and gave it a small wave causing a nearby vase to shatter, before Ollivander snatched the wand from her, replacing it with another wand, which he soon took only for it to be replaced again with a different wand. For the next hour Naruto watched as Ollivander had Harley try a number of different wands before he pulled down a box and held it for a few seconds, just staring at it. 
I wonder, yes, why not, he muttered as he walked over and handed the girl the wand, which caused her to surge with power, the second the wand touched her palm. Holly, 11 inches with a phoenix feather core, curious, very curious indeed. Sorry, but what's curious? Harley asked, and even Naruto leaned in to hear what the old man had to say. I remember every wand I've ever sold Mrs. Potter, it so happens that the phoenix whose feather resides in your wand gave another, just one other, it's curious that you should be destined for this wand when its brother gave you that scar, Ollivander said getting white eyes from Harley, and a raised eyebrow from Naruto. As Harley sat down Naruto stepped forward in order to get his wand, getting a raised eyebrow from Ollivander. Ah, uh, Mr. Yuzumaki, just like Miss Potter, I've been waiting for you, Ollivander left before returning with a long black box with chains around it, Dumbledore told me about you, about your parents, I must say I was quite surprised when I heard who they were, Dumbledore knows who my parents are, Naruto asked slightly surprised, he didn't think anyone besides him, his mom, his followers, Kabuto, and Lucius Malfoy. Yes, he was quite interested in the fact that he had a son, even if it wasn't in the normal way. Naruto shook his head, wondering where the old man was going with this. It took me a while, but I was finally able to find the wand I believe would be perfect for you, one I hope you can redeem. He opened the box and pulled out a long white wand, which he slowly handed to Naruto. As Naruto took the wand he felt a flood of power flow rush through him before, without warning his world went black only to be replaced by a large cage with the word seal over the keyhole, the strange this was that there were two cages, and Harley was standing next to him wearing a confused look on her face. Naruto, where are we? Harley asked before freezing as two pairs of giant red eyes opened from behind each of the cages. So, my jailer decided to visit me, and you somehow managed to retrieve my other half, one of the pairs of red eyes said, causing Harley to move behind Naruto in fear. What the hell are you babbling about now you overgrown plushie? Naruto glanced at the other pair of eyes, then over his shoulder at the girl who lived before the Kyubi's words started to sink into his mind. Don't tell me, that pair of eyes is your yin half? Quite perceptive. Did you figure that out from my yang half's words, or was it simply a lucky guess? The yin Kyubi snarled getting narrowed eyes from Naruto, who pointed his wand at the two foxes. Silencio Naruto muttered, and both foxes fell silent, their eyes narrowing at Naruto in anger. Naruto, what's going on, where are we, and who are they? Harley asked pointing at the two giant foxes that were glaring at them. Sigh things can never be easy for me, can they? Naruto muttered to himself noticing Harley's eyes narrowing slightly, waiting for him to tell her what was going on. Fine but just remember, we can't choose who our relatives are. Harley not an understanding, seeing as she was related to the Dursleys. Sigh my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I am the son of Medusa, the snake Sanin, and the man that gave you that scar, Lord Voldemort. Naruto let out a small sigh as he stood on a roof of Privet Drive, watching as Harley read through one of her school books. Behind him were four other shinobi whose magical core he had activated back in the Elemental Nations, and whom he and Harley had met in Diagon Alley after their little meeting in their mindscape. Flashback. Sigh things can never be easy for me, can they? Naruto muttered to himself noticing Harley's eyes narrowing slightly, waiting for him to tell her what was going on. Fine but just remember, we can't choose who our relatives are, Harley nodded in understanding, seeing as she was related to the Dursleys. Sai my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I am the son of Medusa, the snake Sanin, and the man that gave you that scar, Lord Voldemort. So you're the son of Voldemort? Harley asked getting a nod from Naruto, who looked a little guilty, though she couldn't really see why, like he said, you can't choose who your relatives are. Yeah, I'm the son of the man that killed your parents, Naruto looked away a little thinking she would hate him now, which hurt him for some strange reason, he didn't know why, but he felt a strong connection with Harley that he couldn't really explain, you know I don't blame you for that, Naruto's head snapped in her direction confusion written on his face, like you said, you can't choose your family, she smiled getting a small smirk from Naruto, but that doesn't explain why you were afraid of telling me. Well that's partly due to these two. Naruto pointed at the two giant foxes behind them. Back where I'm from people hate people like me, people who hold back creatures like them, Biju as they're known, because of that fear and hate myself, and the other eight Jinchuriki, as we're known, develop a lot of trust issues. Alright, but that doesn't answer my questions, Harley said with a raised eyebrow. Don't worry I'm getting there. He let out a small sigh. Anyways, I come from a place called the Elemental Nations, it's a rather large island-like continent, much like Australia. 
Though not as big, it's surrounded by a powerful barrier that makes finding it almost impossible. In the elemental nations everyone has what you call a chakra core, which is the same as the magical core wizards have but also different. Naruto shook his head at the girl's questioning look telling her he would explain later. Anyways of about three years before my dad attacked you, he found the elemental nation and began learning about it and its people, after a while he met my mom, Medusa the snake Sanin, after about a year before either of us were born my mom, who is unable to have kids took some of my dad's genes and implanted them into one of her eggs, before placing it inside of another woman who gave birth to me. Her name was Kishina, and she previously held these two inside of her, though at that time they were one being. The night I was born a man came by and released Kayubi, the two foxes behind you, from Kishina, and in order to save his home, her husband Minato, sealed half of the fox into me, Harley's eyes widened at that. Currently we are inside of a joint mindscape though I'm not really sure how that came to pass, and somehow, you now hold the other half of Kayubi, or the in half, though again, I don't know how that happened, Harley's eyes widened at that, she was just like Naruto now, she didn't know why, but she felt glad for some reason. So, what all does that entail? Harley asked getting a shrug from the redhead, don't know, but we should be getting back, we can figure this out later, nodding in agreement, Naruto forced both of them outside of the mindscape where they found only a second had passed. Is everything alright? Ollivander asked as Naruto, who had gained a glazed look in his eyes after taking the wand that one belonged to Voldemort, snapped out of his trance. Yeah, I'm fine, just a little overwhelmed, he said shaking his head before him and Harley paid for their wands and left the shop, headed back to the bar with Hagrid, who had gone and gotten Harley and Owl as a birthday present. Upon entering the bar Naruto froze catching Harley and Hagrid's attention as he saw four familiar looking people sitting at the bar, having a few drinks with a number of familiar looking bags sitting behind them. The first person was a boy with short russet red hair and rings around his sea green eyes, he was wearing a pair of brown pants, a brown shirt and a brown cloak, this was Gara no Sabaku, the son of the Kazakiage and the Ichibi no Jinchiriki. Next was a boy with long black hair and dark brown eyes, he was wearing a pink kimono, which was getting him a lot of strange looks, and caused Naruto to smirk at all of the men looking at him. This was Hakuyuki, the old apprentice of Zabuza Mamachi, and the current wielder of the Kubakirabacho. The third and final male had long white hair, vivid green eyes and two red dots on his forehead, he was wearing a pair of grey pants, a loose grey shirt with a purple belt around his waist, this was Kamimuro Kagaya, the last of the Kagaya clan, and one of Naruto's bodyguards. The final person was a girl with long platinum blonde hair tied in a ponytail and green eyes, she was wearing a purple shirt and matching skirt with bandage wrappings around her lower body, this was Ino Yamanaka, the heir of the Yamanaka clan. Though he didn't know she had gotten a letter to Hogwarts. Though he shouldn't have been surprised seeing as he had activated the magical core of all four of them during the previous year. Flashback end. After meeting up with the four and introducing them to Harley, Hagrid had escorted said girl back to her aunt and uncles while the shinobi had a small meeting in which Naruto told them what had happened after getting his wand and that he planned to train Harley in the shinobi arts since he could now sense her chakra core. So what's the plan Naruto? Ino asked looking at Harley, after Hagrid had taken her back to her relatives, Naruto and Ino had, using their shinobi training, gone to see her a lot, and Ino had become fast friends with Harley. Tomorrow is when we leave for Hogwarts, I want you to make sure she gets onto the train without incident, Ino nodded before the five shinobi all vanished in their own chosen ways, they needed to finish preparing for the next day. Harley looked around nervously as she stood in King's Cross Station, her aunt, uncle and cousin had just left, and, according to the clock on the wall, she only had 10 minutes to get onto the train to Hogwarts. What am I supposed to do now? Hagrid didn't tell us how to get onto the train, Harley wondered as she looked around, hoping to see Naruto or one of the other shinobi. Before she could do anything she felt, she didn't know what it was, but she could feel something, and number of them, and they were all moving in a group. Turning to look around she saw a large group of red-headed people pushing carts full of trunks, and uneven had an owl, not daring to get her hopes up she followed the people, not noticing Eno standing a few feet from her with a curious gaze. So, it seems Harley is a natural sensor type. I need to tell Naruto Eno thought as she vanished into the crowd of people around her, still watching Harley as she talked with the redheads and learned how to get onto platform 9 3 fourths. So, I see you managed to get onto the train without any problems, 
Harley jumped at the voice as she sat in an empty compartment, before turning to see Naruto standing in the door. Yeah, I did have a little trouble, since Hagrid forgot to tell us how to get onto the platform, Naruto nodded at that, Hagrid did seem to be the forgetful type, though something weird happened before I did, while I was looking around I felt something, I don't know what it is, but it helped me find a wizarding family, and they helped me get onto the platform. That's because you're a censor, Naruto had to stop himself from laughing at the confused look on Harley's face, though he had to admit it did make her look cute. A censor is someone who can sense a person's chakra, and in our case magic. So I was sensing magic? Naruto nodded with a small smirk before he sat down in the chair opposite her. Yep, though I never expected you to be a censor type, must have something to do with you possessing Kyubi's yin half, he smiled at her before they felt the train begin to move. So shall we start your shinobi training? Harley nodded eagerly, wondering what type of training she would be doing. Good then put those on, he tossed her a pair of bracelets and anklets, which she looked at confusedly before putting them on, figuring he must have a good reason, once all four were on Harley sunk to the floor, feeling like an elephant was sitting on top of her. Those trinkets are training weights, they have special seals on them that increase the amount of weight every three months, that way your body can get used to the weight, Naruto smirked, remembering the times H had to wear them. Though thanks to Kyubi healing your body, you should be getting used to the weight already. Harley blinked at that, Naruto was right, the weight was starting to lighten a little, though it now felt like she was trying to lift a boulder. After a few seconds Harley had managed to pull herself up just before the compartment door opened and a boy with bright red hair stuck his head in. Is anyone sitting there, everywhere else is full? He asked pointing to the empty seat next to Naruto. Sorry, but we're waiting on some friend, Naruto said quickly, which was true, he had told Haku and Ino to meet him once he found Harley. But you can sit there until they get here, he pointed to the seat next to the door. Thanks, he entered the compartment and sat down trying to become inconspicuous. I'm Ron by the way, Ron Weasley, he said nervously. Naruto Uzumaki, Harley Potter, the two Jinchuriki said getting white eyes from Ron. Are you really Harley Potter? Ron asked in wonder, receiving a nod from the girl. And do you really have that he pointed to his head indicating her lightning bolt shaped scar. Nodding her head and showing her scar, Ron stared in utter amazement while Naruto narrowed his eyes, he could feel a faint presence inside of it, much like his mother's curse seals. So, Harley's got a small fragment of Voldemort's soul in her, interesting. Though Kyubi should take care of it soon, enough Naruto thought, before pulling out a book on the chakra control. Here you go Harley, you need to read that before we can get started, he handed her the book and leaned back in his seat as she began to read, Ron looking at the book in confusion, since he couldn't read the language on the cover, before he leaned back in his seat. Over the next few hours the compartment was quiet as Harley read the book on chakra control, after about an hour Ron had left. Like he agreed to, when Haku and Nino arrived, once Ron was gone, the three began talking about what they expected from Hogwarts. Well this has been an uneventful trip, Naruto said reading through an advanced potions book, going over a potion called the Polyjuice Potion, wondering if he could use it to copy bloodlines like the ones Haku and Kamimro had. Before he could voice his idea to the three the compartment door opened and in walked a girl with bushy brown hair and brown eyes, who was already in her school robes. Excuse me but has anyone seen a toad, Neville lost one? She asked causing everyone to look at her before Naruto sniggered at the blush creeping across Haku's face. No we haven't, sorry. Haku stuttered out getting a chuckle from both Naruto and Nino and a concerned look from Harley. With a nod of understanding the girl left, at which point Naruto and Ino burst out laughing, causing Haku to become redder. What's so funny? Harley asked looking between Ino and Naruto, who were still laughing their heads off. It's nothing really, just that Haku has a crush on that girl, Ino said, and both of them burst out laughing again, as Haku sunk his head behind the book he was reading, hoping to become invisible. Naruto glanced around cautiously, taking in everything he could of the Great Hall, as he stood with the rest of the first years, waiting to be sorted into one of the four houses, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. Up at the teacher's table Naruto saw Quirrell and Hagrid sitting on either side of someone who caused Naruto to smirk, sitting between the two teachers was a man with shoulder-length blood red hair and purple eyes with ring in a ripple-like pattern. He was wearing a black cloak with red clouds, and was looking at Naruto with a small smirk of his own. This man was Nagato Uzumaki, 
Naruto's cousin thanks to Kishina, after Naruto had left Konoha he had gone and met with Nagato face to face and beat some sense into him after going full Kyubi and destroying half of Omegakur, with Nagato no longer taking orders from Abito or Madara and Zetsu both of whom he had drained of Chakra in order to restore his health, Akatsuki had been disbanded, and Nagato had trained Naruto in the Uzumaki clan ways, along with his other cousin Karen, who would hopefully be attending Hogwarts in a year. So, it looks like Nagato was able to get a position here while Conan runs aim Naruto thought as the sorting hat which was sitting in front of the hall, finished singing, and Professor McGonagall, a strict looking witch, began reading of a list of names. After disbanding the Akatsuki minus Itachi who agreed to stay in aim and help train Naruto, Naruto had activated Nagato's, Itachi's and Conan's magical cores and gave them the books he had received from the Death Eaters he had been in contact with, he had even activated his mother's core, something she found rather useful. Harley Potter, Naruto snapped out of his thoughts and glanced up as McGonagall called Harley's name causing the whole hall to fall silent glancing around Naruto noticed that Kamimuro had been placed in Slytherin while he was thinking and a number of other people had been placed in other houses. Harley was nervous as she sat on the stool, the sorting hat being placed on her head, the last thing she saw before it fell over her eyes were Naruto's slitted eyes watching her with interest. Well now this is interesting, very interesting, you have a strong mind and will, that much is shown by the strange seal on you holding the fox back, and a cunning mind, but where to put you, a voice said in her head, and she knew it wasn't the Kyubi's voice, not Slytherin, not Slytherin, she thought, she had heard and read about Slytherin, and while she knew Naruto would more than likely be placed there something deep inside her told her, that that wasn't the right house for her. Not Slytherin, you could be great you know, and Slytherin would help you on your way to greatness, it's all here in your head, the voice said in a knowing voice, though Harley shook her head, she knew it was the wrong house for her, though she couldn't explain why. Well if you're sure, better be, Gryffindor, the hat shouted for the whole hall to hear, causing the Gryffindor table to burst into cheers. As she got up to head to the Gryffindor table she caught Naruto's eye, getting a small nod and smile from him, which meant more to her than all the cheers she was getting from the Gryffindors, though she didn't really know why, she liked Naruto sure, he was her first friend, but did she like as more than a friend, or was this just the feeling the excitement of getting sorted into a house? Maybe she would ask Ino or Haku later. Once the excitement of Harley being sorted died down, McGonagall continued the sorting, with Gara going to Hufflepuff surprisingly, after what felt like forever Naruto was finally called causing a hush to fall over the hall, as he walked forward with confidence, and sat on the stool like a throne. Um, interesting. Possibly more so than the Potter girl, or the Sabaku boy, Naruto heard a voice say in his head, one he knew wasn't Kayubi's. You have many of the same qualities as the Potter girl, as well as your father, you are cunning and resourceful, though unlike him, you actually have some form of attachment to others more so than just controlling them. Of course I do, if you had the same life I had while in Konoha, you would value bonds with people just as much, Naruto thought showing the hat a few flashes of his time in Konoha, you can share those with the old man if you want, just hurry up and place me in a house so I can go sit down, this stool is really uncomfortable, the hat had to suppress a snort at Naruto's words, very well then since you're so insistent, better be, Slytherin, the hat shouted out getting a cheer from the Slytherin table, as Naruto moved over and sat next to Kamimuro, who simply nodded his head in Naruto's direction, once everyone was sorted, Ino going to Ravenclaw and Haku going to Gryffindor, Dumbledore stood up to give a few announcements. I have just a few announcements before we begin our start of term feast. Firstly, I would like to introduce you all to Mr. Nagato Yuzumaki, who has traveled from the elemental nations, he will be teaching a new class, something that will help you should you ever lose your wands, a self-defense class, or as they call it in the elemental nations, Tijutsu. At this the whole school broke into whispers, also the class is mandatory for all years and will be taken through all seven years, another bout of whispers swept through the hall at this. When the whispering had died down, Dumbledore went on to inform them about other things, such as the forest being out of bounds, as well as one of the third floor corridors, before he waved his hands causing the food to appear. So, Nagato's going to be teaching here, that will make training Harley a lot easier Naruto thought with a smirk. Speaking of my other half's jailer, it appears that Weasley boy is trying to make himself out to be an alpha, Naruto glanced over at Harley, who was sitting between Haku and Ron, with Ron trying to be over-friendly, 
We'll see about that Naruto began channeling a little bit of chakra and killing intent and directing it specifically at Ron. Harley let out a small sigh as she sat next to Haku and across from Hermione, whom Haku was blushing at while talking. What's wrong Harley? You seem kind of upset, Hermione asked seeing Harley glance over her shoulder at Naruto. It's nothing, I was just hoping Naruto would be in Gryffindor too. But I can understand why he would go to Slytherin, Hermione looked interested at her words. You know, Naruto probably went to Slytherin for a reason, Haku said as he continued to glance at Hermione, knowing him, he has some complex reason for going into Slytherin. You should forget about that Slytherin, the three turned to Ron who was sitting next to them. They're nothing but lowlifes who only look out for themselves. How can you would you know that? Hermione asked in a disbelieving tone. Because all Slytherins are like that, Ron said adamantly. There's not a single dark witch or wizard who didn't come from Slytherin, even you know who was in Slytherin. Harley's eyes widened at that news, Voldemort was in Slytherin. That doesn't mean that all Slytherins are bad, it just means that they live up to their houses' expectations, Haku said, getting a nod from Hermione and Harley, and a snort from Ron. Before he could say anything in retort, Ron froze getting Harley and Haku's attention, slowly glancing over their shoulder. They saw Naruto glaring at Ron, his eye glowing an eerie red color. Well, either Naruto heard you insulting him or he just doesn't like you, Haku said with a small frown, he had wished Naruto wouldn't start something like this on the right when they arrived. Sigh I'd be careful if I was you, Naruto isn't one to forgive easily when mad. What do you mean? Ron stuttered out, fear evident in his voice. Naruto is, for lack of a better word, a pranking demon, at those words two other Weasleys who had introduced themselves as Fred and George, perked up, you can tell his intent by his eyes, they're glowing red, that means you have made an enemy of someone who once pranked an entire village, without leaving any evidence that it was him, if you're not careful you'll find yourself on the wrong side of a one-sided prank war, Ron gulped at this, while everyone else in the hall felt a shiver run down their spines, Everyone could feel a giant war coming over the next few years that would involve the Weasley twins and Naruto. Naruto let out a small sigh as he sat in his first class of the school year, History of Magic, which was being held with the Ravenclaws. As he sat between Eno and Kamimuro, he began tuning out the teacher, Professor Binns, who was the only ghost teacher, instead opening his book on Transfiguration. Well now, this is interesting. Naruto muttered as he came across a passage labeled Animagus, which caught the attention of his fellow shinobi. Listen to this, an Animagus is a witch or wizard who can morph him or herself into an animal at will, it takes skill, practice, and patience for wizards and witches to become Animagus. For more information, read a guide to Transfiguration Grade 4. Well, that seems useful, Eno said thinking over all of the different types of animals out there, trying to figure out which one would suit her. That's not the only thing that seems useful, Kamimro said pointing at the next part in the book that told of another form of powerful magic. Apparition. Apparition is a magical method of transportation and is basically the magical action of traveling by having the user focus on a desired location in their mind, then disappear from their current location and instantly reappear at the desired location, in short, it is a form of teleportation. It is by far the fastest way to get to one's desired destination, but is tricky to pull off correctly and disastrous if botched up. Hmm, that's something we should talk to Dumbledore about letting us learn this year. It would help when returned to the elemental nations, Naruto smirked as he continued to flip through the book wondering what Harley was doing. Harley let out a small sigh as she sat next to her new friend Ron, in their first class of the year's transfiguration, during the feast the previous night, after Naruto's killing intent as Haku called it, Harley and Ron began talking, and Ron began telling her everything he knew about the wizarding world. After that the two had become friends, Harley reasoning that they were in the same house, so they might as well try to get along. Something wrong Harley? Hermione asked as Professor McGonagall explained what they would be learning in class this year. No, it's just, I can't really explain it. But I have the strange feeling that things are going to become very hard for us later on this week, said as a small shiver ran up her spine, something told her Naruto would be talking to Dumbledore, which would make her school life that much harder, and it only just begun. It was probably something Naruto has planned. Haku chuckled as he copied what McGonagall was saying along with Hermione. Knowing him he probably found something that only older students are allowed to learn that he thinks will be useful back in the elemental nations. My other half staler sounds like an idiot. Harley heard Kayubi say from inside her head, getting a confused look from the girl. 
If Kyuubi's bugging you just close the connection by focusing on something else, Gara said causing Harley to turn to him curiously. Ichibi never really knows how to shut up, and Kyuubi is always making fun of Naruto. We found that if you focus on something, such as a book or training, you can close them up for a time. Sighing, Harley put her head down and tried to close of her connection to Kyuubi while wondering what Naruto had planned for them. As the first lessons of the day came to an end and everyone headed to the great hall for lunch, Naruto leaned against the door to the hall looking around, waiting for Harley. After his first class, Naruto had sent a shadow clone to his second class, defense against the dark arts while he went to the library, where he managed to find information on an imagus apparition and the polyjuice, which he sent a clone to start working on, since it took a full month to make. Naruto, Naruto looked up and smirked at the sight of Harley walking over to him along with Haku, Hermione and Ron. What are you doing out here? Waiting for you, he smiled, sending another chill down Harley's spine. During my last two classes I found some useful things and figured you might like to learn them with me. The four Gryffindors blinked at him, waiting for him to tell them what he found only for him to hand them a piece of paper. Blinking in confusion, they all looked at the paper and read what Naruto had found. See I told you it was something he had planned, Haku said getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto. And what's that supposed to mean? Haku raised his hands in surrender and moved behind Harley causing the two female Gryffindors to giggle. It means that he knows you, the five turned as Kamimuro approached followed by Gara and Ino. Just like me and Ino know you, and we know how to stop you from doing anything stupid. And when have I ever done anything stupid? The four shinobi simply stared at him with blank looks on their faces. Do you want the list alphabetically or numerically? Naruto narrowed his eyes at Ino who simply stuck out her tongue out at him before grabbing the list from Harley and looking it over. This actually seems like it would be very useful, Kamimuro said glancing over Ino's shoulder at the list and raising an eyebrow. Well that's why I chose them, Naruto said exasperated as they group all moved into the hall before sitting at the Gryffindor table, ignoring the curious looks from the other students around them. But Naruto, do you really think we can learn any of this yet? I mean, it's only out first day. We haven't even got homework yet. Harley asked getting a nod of agreement from Ron. Sure we can, in fact I've already started. He stuck out his tongue which held a strange leaf folded on it before he put it back in his mouth and pressed it against his cheek which bulged for a few seconds. What was that? Hermione asked curiously looking at Naruto while Ron looked a little green. That was the leaf of a mandrake, it's part of the proses in becoming an animagus, what you have to do is keep the leaf in in your mouth for an entire month he pulled out a bag full of leaves and handed one to everyone but Ron. I got a leaf for everyone, the simplest way to keep it in and be able to talk and eat normally is to fold it and stick it between your cheek and gum near the back of the mouth. Taking the leaf she was offered, Harley shared a glance with Hermione as both watched the other shinobi stick the leaf into their mouths before both copied them, using their tongues to place the leaf in the back of their mouths. Are you sure about this Naruto? Harley asked trying not to gag on the leaf, it had a strange taste to it. Yep, after a month with these leaves in our mouths, we can move on to the next phase in becoming an imagus. Though we do need to begin thinking which animal we want to be able to turn into, he smirked at the her before they all began digging into the lunch that had just appeared. So what animal are you planning on becoming? Hermione asked trying not to gag on the leaf as she placed it in her mouth and positioned it like Naruto instructed. That is my secret, Naruto smirked as they ate lunch before the talking turned to their first day. You wish to see me professor? Naruto asked as he entered the office of Professor Dumbledore, seeing the old man sitting behind his desk with a smile on his face. Ah yes, thank you for coming Naruto. Naruto closed the door and moved over to stand before Dumbledore. The reason I called you here Naruto is that I would like to discuss your father. I assume that you're wanting to know if I'm anything like him? Naruto asked taking the seat across from the older wizard. In a matter of speaking, though I would like to learn more about the life you live growing up. I believe that you were taught magic from a young age by one of Voldemort's many followers? That's right, I was born in Kanoha and raised by a man named Avery and one of my mom's spies, they both trained me, Avery taught me magic and my mom's spy taught me the shinobi arts, a smile appeared on Naruto's face as he thought about his two teachers, while neither were parental figures they did at least care about him. As I'm sure you know, my mom, being too old to actually have children of her own, used her own egg and DNA from my dad and injected both into my birth mother Kashina, which gave me Yuzumaki blood as well. 
Naruto paused as he thought about everything he knew about Kishina, he would have liked to meet her. Because of a disaster that occurred on the night of my birth, the villager hated me, so my childhood up until my seventh birthday wasn't really what one would call pleasant, though it was on my eighth birthday that everything became better, since that was the night my mom's spy took me away from there when Avery killed a man that tried to attack me. So that's what happened the night you disappeared, Naruto tensed and turned to see someone he never thought he would see again, walking out from a side room was one Hiruzen Saratobi the third Hokage of Konoha, upon seeing the old man Naruto, out of instinct, leapt out of the chair and drew a kunai, holding it in a defensive position, it's good to see you again Naruto, he said in a kind grandfatherly way, please sit down, I am not here to take you back to Kanoha, Naruto narrowed his eyes in suspicion before moving back to his seat, his kunai still in hand, why are you here, Naruto asked glancing between both old men with calculating eyes, to talk, nothing more, Saratobi said sitting in a chair, forming a triangle between the three, now please continue where you left of at, with a small grunt Naruto took a deep breath, slowly letting it out as he tried to calm his anger even though the third was always kind to him, he never tried to help Naruto mainly by keeping his parentage a secret from him and the fact he was a jinchuriki. Sigh after leaving Konoha, the spy took me to my mother, Medusa, who made me her apprentice, she trained me in everything I know, from jutsu to tactics, she raised me, maybe no as a mother should, but she did, and she cared about me in her own way, she never attempted to experiment on me like she did others. So your life became better after you left your village, Dumbledore asked, raising his eyebrow, Dumbledore, like Voldemort, had stumbled upon the elemental nations when he was younger, and met Saratobi just after he had been named Hokage, which was how he knew the man. Not really, it's just I didn't have to listen to everyone muttering behind my back or glaring at me everywhere I went. Naruto threw the third a heated glare, as he looked away to avoid Naruto's eyes. After I left and was trained by mom, I met a number of people all missing shinobi, who trained me in different ways, each teaching me powerful jutsu, they taught me strategy, tactics, poisons and antidotes, everything I would need to be a powerful shinobi. I see, and what of your wizard training? Seeing as Avery is unfortunately dead, Dumbledore asked crossing his fingers and leaning on them. Avery was in contact with a number of other Death Eaters, after he was caught I sent them a letter asking for books and things, and they sent me things on basic jinxes and hexes, they even sent me instructions on the three unforgivable curses, which I have used many times, Naruto said, thinking of the first time he used on of the curses, the imperious curse, he used it on Haydn. Using the idiot as a distraction to get into aim in order to talk with Nagato. You've used the unforgivable curses? Dumbledore asked a little surprised, he had never heard of someone so young using the curses before. Though knowing where Naruto came from he shouldn't be surprised, only a few times and only as a last resort. I don't know why, but those curses make killing my opponent too easy, it takes away the fun from the fight, Naruto grinned, getting a sad smile from the two older men. Naruto may I ask a question, Naruto eyed the third Hokage cautiously, before nodding slowly, are you happy the way you are now, Naruto paused at that, he had never expected the old man to ask him something like how he felt, he was sure the old man would ask the location of his mom, not about how he felt, honestly, I don't know, I guess you could say I'm happy, I have friends followers and people that both fear and respect me, but I really couldn't say, Naruto said honestly, and it was true, he couldn't say whether or not he was happy, but he was certainly happier than he was back in Kanoha. I understand, Saratobi smiled his grandfatherly smile, which was matched by Dumbledore. Well now that we know a little more about you Naruto I must ask, do you think you will be like your parents? Dumbledore asked, for a few moments Naruto was silent as he stared into Dumbledore's fire, watching the flames dance as he thought about his question, would he be like his parents, both were considered evil in their own rights, and wanted by the world for numerous crimes, with a small sigh. Naruto's eyes flickered from the bright orange flames, dancing around to the bright red and gold bird sitting on a perch before his eyes widened, unlike most people he didn't have just one set of parents he had two, not so much Minato, but he was related to Kishina Uzumaki. That's hard to say, since unlike most people I have two sets of parents, I'm a mixture of Voldemort's and Medusa's DNA, but I was grown inside Kishina and absorbed some of her DNA as well, the two older men looked curiously at Naruto, waiting for him to continue. 
But I guess in answer to your question, it will all depend on my relation to the person, if their friends are neutral then I might be like Kishina, hot-headed when mad, but otherwise kind, but to my enemies, I'll be more like Medusa or Voldemort, torture them into insanity or just outright kill them, both of the older men stared at him, trying to figure out the enigma that was Naruto, though I will let you know now old man, Naruto turned to face Saratobi, his eyes were blood red, my mom plans to destroy Konoha, I don't know how or when, she wanted it to be a surprise for me, but I'm letting you know now, when she does attack, I will be there fighting next to her, repaying that village for 8 years of shit, and if you, Kakashi, Yugao, or Anko try to stop me, I will kill you without hesitation. At this proclamation both old men tensed a little before relaxing at the smirk on Naruto's face, which told them while he was serious, the chances of him having to kill any of the four people he named, were slim to none accident. Harley let out a small sigh as she stood with the rest of the first years out on the grounds of the school, it was the first Friday of the year, and like everyone else, she was curious about their first self-defense class of the year. Though like everyone, except for Naruto and the other shinobi, she was getting tired of waiting for their new teacher. Where do you think this guy is? Ron asked in a whisper looking around like the rest of the class. Shrugging her shoulders, Harley began looking around before she sensed a powerful chakra signature above them. Looking up Harley let out a gasp of surprise at the sight of Nagato. Standing in the air high above them. Took them long enough. Harley heard Gara say. Getting a chuckle out of Naruto. As the rest of the first years, upon hearing Harley gasp, looked up and stared in amazement at the sight of their new teacher standing there looking down upon them. So you finally noticed me, that was faster than the other years, Nagato said as he landed in front of the gathering of first years. And seeing as it was Mrs. Potter that noticed me first, I believe Gryffindor should get 10 points. Now as you all my have heard this class is not like your normal classes, you will not be waving you wands or reading out of books, in this class you will sweat, and you will come to hate me, but what you learn in this class, just may save your life one day if you work at it, Nagata said, getting a smirk from the shinobi in the class smirk. Now why don't we have a demonstration of what you might be learning over the next few years, Naruto, Ino, if you would please step forward, the two shinobi shared a small glance as the move to the open space next to Nagato. You ready for this? Naruto asked as they stood a few feet apart facing each other. I plan to win this time, Naruto smirked as the two got into their respective stances, as Nagato stood between them, the other shinobi moving everyone back a good distance. Remember, this is tojutsu only, no nin, gen, or kenjutsu allowed, and try not to be too destructive, both smirked at that before nodding. Very well then, begin, hajim, at a signal both shinobi rushed each other prepared to impress their classmates. Harley stared in awe as she watched Naruto and Ino fight around her the other first years were wearing white-eyed expressions as the two threw punches and kicks like nothing. Though Harley noticed that Gara and Haku were talking while Kamimro read a book. This is insane, Ron muttered getting an agreeing nod from those around him. I don't think they're really trying though, Harley said getting strange looks from everyone. Very good Harley, another 5 points for Gryffindor, Nagato said from behind them, while Naruto and Ino spared Nagato had begun walking around the class trying to get a feel for these wizards. At the sound of Nagato's voice everyone, minus Harley and the shinobi, jumped in surprise as they glanced at him. You're right, those two aren't really trying, they are simply giving a small demonstration of the basics, he said as everyone turned back to the two fighting. Excuse me, Nagato, can we go now? Everyone turned to see Naruto and Ino leaning against a nearby tree, both eating sandwiches. I still need to finish that essay for McGonagall which is due after this class, Ino said, getting a sigh from Naruto, while the other first years looked between the two by the tree and the two fighting. Sigh Ino, you may go and finish your report. Naruto I want you to help me with the class, Ino Bean before vanishing in a swirl of water, followed by the other shinobi, while Naruto finished of his sandwich. Fine, what do you want me to do? At the question all of the first years felt a shiver run down their spin at the smirk Nagato gave. That new teacher is evil, one of Naruto's fellow Slytherins, a girl named Tracy Davis, as she pulled herself into the common room along with the other Slytherin first years, minus Naruto and Kamimro, who were following along without a care in the world. Yeah, how are you two alright? Asked another girl, Pansy Parkinson, as all of the first years glanced over at Naruto and Kamimro. 
What Nagato had you all do today was basic training, Kamimro said with a blank face, where we're from, we learn to do all of that by age 5, he's right, just be glad Nagato didn't put any pressure on you, both Naruto and Kamimro shuddered at the thought of Nagato increasing the gravity, while these guys were learning, they wouldn't survive, are you saying you've already done all of this, Draco Malfoy asked in surprise only to get a bored nod from the two, yep, now if you all excuse me, I have an essay for Snape that I need to finish, Naruto smirked before leaving in a swirl of fire. Harley let out a tired sigh as she helped Neville back into the common room after their first self-defense class, while she wasn't as teared as the others, having already started her training before the school year began, she was able to last a little longer in the class than the others, though she was still tired. Man, that was tiring, Lavender Brown said as she sat in the common room next to Parvati Paddle and Hermione who was being given some ointment by Haku. I didn't think it was that bad, Haku said getting a glare from all of his fellow Gryffindors, including Hermione, how had also started extra training the day after school began. It was horrible, Hermione groaned as Haku rubbed some ointment on her shoulders. How were you able to do it Harley? You don't look tired at all, everyone turned to the girl who lived to see Hermione was right, the only evidence that she had worked hard was the sweat on her forehead. I don't know, she answered half truthfully, she knew that Kayubi healed her faster than anything, though she had no clue as to why the class seemed easier to her than it did the others, she had never trained a day before in her life, unless you count all the times she had to run from her cousin Dudley. Don't worry about it Harley, this training just comes naturally to some people, Haku smirked as he pulled out more ointment for the other first years. Now, if I'm not mistaken we have potions next, so I think we should hurry up before Snap gives us detention. Later that day found the first years once again out on the grounds, this time each standing next to a broom, as they prepared for their first flying lesson, though everyone still looked a bit sore. I wonder if flying's really as difficult as what I've heard, Naruto asked as they all waited for the flying teacher Madam Hooch. I doubt it, from what I've seen of the older students it seems rather easy, Gara said as he looked down at the broom next to him. Yeah, flying's easy, Ron said feeling superior for once and hoping to impress Harley a little. What would you know Weasley, I bet you've never even been on a broom before, Malfoy said getting a chuckle from the Slytherins, though Naruto, Harley and the other shinobi, weren't even paying attention to them. Suddenly everyone cringed, especially Naruto, Gara, and Harley, as a loud whistle sounded drawing their attention to an older looking woman walking towards them with a stern look on her face. I am Madam Hooch, and I will be your flying instructor. Now I want you all to stand next to your brooms, she said sternly. Well, what are you all waiting for? Once all of them had moved to stand next to their broom, Madam Hooch began barking instructions, which they followed until Neville, who was very jumpy panicked about being left on the ground and pushed of the ground, which ended up with him getting a broken wrist. Well that was a waste of time, Naruto muttered as Harley sat next to him at the Slytherin table for lunch, they had taken to eating with a different house for lunch every day. What happened? Eno asked looking between Naruto and Harley, both of whom had been taken from the flying lesson by their heads of house. McGonagall took me to meet Oliver Wood, who's captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, they made the seeker, Harley said a little confused. After Neville had broken his wrist, Malfoy had picked up the remembral, which he had gotten that morning, when Harley ordered him to give it to her, Malfoy hopped onto the broom he was still holding and flew of, with Harley and Naruto following, once they were high enough, Malfoy threw the remembral as hard as he could prompting Harley and Naruto to fly after it with Harley catching it after a 50-foot dive. With the remembral in hand, the two landed amidst a cheering crowd of first years only for Professor McGonagall and Snap to appear, and took both Jinchuriki away. Yeah, Snap did the same thing, said if I didn't join the team as seeker that he would give me detention for a month, Naruto sighed, it wasn't that he was really worried about getting a detention, he just didn't want to be bothered with it. So both of you joined this Quidditch team? Gara asked getting a nod from the two. Yep, apparently it's some kind of sport these wizards play while up in the air, sounds pointless if you ask me, Naruto said pulling out and tossing him a book he had found on the game, called Quidditch Through the Ages. Catching the book Gara began flipping through it with hast, snorting at what he read, what many people didn't know about Gara was that he had a photographic memory, unlike the other Jinchuriki, 
most of who had excellent memories when it came to jutsu or tojutsu. This game seems to only strengthen your reflexes and hand-eye coordination, he said after a few minutes. It's relatively useless for use, though it might be an interesting way to kill time. Naruto let out a sigh and nodded while Harley poked at her food. Is something wrong Harley? Haku asked noticing that she was quiet. No, it's just, I wonder if I'll be any good at Quidditch. Professor McGonagall seemed to be really confident in me when she told me to train hard. The shinobi looked at each other, wondering what to say before Hermione spoke up with a smile. You won't be horrible, at their questioning gaze Hermione stood up and pulled all of them to a room full of cups and plaques, most of which she passed before stopping in front of a gold cup, with a tinny man sitting on a broom on the top of it, and a list of names on the bottom. See, it's in your blood, she pointed to one name in particular James Potter Seeker. Well, it looks like we have something to live up to, Naruto said looking at another cup, which had a list of names on it one of which read Tom Riddle Seeker. Who's Tom Riddle? Harley asked in confusion at the name, having never heard it before. Don't worry about it now, just know we both have a name in this game that we need to live up to, Naruto said pulling the girl into a one-armed hug causing her to blush a little while Naruto glanced back at the name. After his talk with Dumbledore and the old Hokage, Naruto had sent a number of clones to find out everything they could about his dad. And after a bit of digging they found out he had acted as a seeker in his final year at Hogwarts during the last game of the season and helped win the cup which got him his name on the cup with the rest of the team. Over the next month things fell into a pattern at Hogwarts, every morning the shinobi, Harley and Hermione, would wake up around 5 for early morning training. Both girls were slowly getting better. Once training was done they would head inside and join the rest of the school for breakfast, all of them eating at a different house table. Despite the looks they were getting from the older students, before they headed off to class. During the weekends the shinobi would lounge around on the grounds or spar on the lake, drawing the attention of many of the other students, who would watch them as they fought on top of the lake, though they would only use tojutsu, saving their ninjutsu training for the forest. The most interesting thing that had happened, in Naruto's opinion anyways, was when Malfoy had challenged Harley to a wizard's duel, Naruto, who had overheard Malfoy's challenge and Ron's immediate acceptance in Harley's place, had gone to watch this duel, only to find out Malfoy had told Filch about them meeting in the trophy room. While Naruto and Haku, who had followed Hermione, who had tried to stop Harley and Ron, were allowed to be out after hours, Harley, Hermione, Ron and surprisingly Neville, were not, and all of them ran when they heard Filch looking for them. Without any real sense of where they were going the six ran and hid in the third floor corridor, where they found the reason for the corridor being out of bounds, a giant three-headed dog which was standing on a trap door, though the only ones who noticed it were Naruto, Haku and Hermione, before they all ran back to Gryffindor Tower. Man, I'm so bored, Naruto groaned as he sat at the Gryffindor table with the rest of his friends, minus Ron who was sitting away from them as they ate the food for the Halloween feast. I thought coming to this place would be more exciting, but the most fun I've had so far is hunting Acromantula for their venom. Well, it could be worse, Eno said as she enjoyed the food from the feast. By the way, where's Hermione? She's in the bathroom, crying. Harley said shooting a small glare down the table at Ron, who noticed the glare and looked away. What happened? Naruto asked noticing where Harley looked, before a number of different scenarios flew through his head along with pranks for getting back at Ron. During charms we were learning to perform the hover charm, and Ron was having trouble and getting irritated, so Hermione tried to help, but Ron snapped at her, then after class he was complaining about her being a bossy know-it-all, and said she didn't have any friends, and she heard him and ran past crying, I tried talking to her, but she wouldn't listen to me. I see, so Ron's my next target. Naruto pulled out a book labeled Punishment Pranks, which sent a chill down the spins of everyone in the hall. Over the past month, Naruto and the Weasley twins have been engaged in a prank war that had affected everyone in the hall in one way or another, from itching powder in the laundry to invisible ink in the soap, though through it all Naruto had become rather good friends with the twins. Before Naruto could so much as open the book Corel burst into the great hall, shouting about a troll being in the dungeon, which caused everyone to fly into a panic, everyone except for the shinobi, who all nodded in agreement before, Naruto grabbing Harley, they all vanished in a cloud of smoke to go look for the troll. 
Are you sure this is a good idea Naruto? Harley asked as she ran down the hall after the shinobi She was currently wearing a standard Anbu uniform, as were the others Of course, this is a good test of how far you've come since the school year began And if things get too rough, we can always step in and finish the job Naruto said over his shoulder After their first self-defense class, Naruto had begun teaching Harley how to use chakra And had even opened Hermione's chakra pathways in order for Haku to teach her if you're sure, I guess I can give it a try, she said, though she wasn't feeling very confident, even though she had been training with Naruto and the others for a little over a month now, and according to them both her and Hermione were at roughly genin rank, she wasn't very confident in her abilities. After a few minutes of running they all stopped as they saw the huge hulking form of the troll lumber into a room, which caused Harley's eyes to widen in horror. No, Hermione's in there, without thinking about what would happen next, Harley channeled Chakra into her legs, and shot off towards the door, and burst through it to see the troll attacking Hermione, who was using her training to dodge the troll's clubs. Acting fast and without really knowing what she was doing, Harley pulled out a handful of kunai and shuriken, and threw them at the beast causing it to roar in pain, as the sharp weapons pierced its thick skin. Hermione, move, Harley began flying through a set of hand seals for a jutsu Naruto, had been teaching her, while the troll turned away from Hermione and glared at Harley. Seeing what Harley was doing, Hermione moved out of the way as she flew through her own set of hand seals. Fire style. Fireball jutsu, wind style. Gail palm. Harley yelled as she spat out a ball of fire at the troll, which grew in size as Hermione, who moved next to Harley, thrust out her palm and sent a burst of wind at the troll. You taught her Gale Palm? Naruto asked as the shinobi all watched with the two jutsu collide and set the troll ablaze. You taught her the fireball jutsu, so you can't really talk, Haku said as the troll roared in pain and hurried footsteps headed in their direction. What in the world happened here? McGonagall asked, shock written across her face as she reached the bathroom, with Snap, Quirrell and Dumb Litter behind her. In front of the four teachers stood a panting Harley and Hermione, both of whom were teared and shocked at what they had just done while an unconscious and badly burnt troll lay in front of them, giving of an even worse smell than it had before. I believe I can answer that, everyone turned to see Naruto, and the others appear out of the shadows with a wide smirk on all their faces. Harley and Hermione just took down a troll by themselves, using the basics of what we taught them, man I should ask mom if I can become a Jonin sensei when we get back, everyone gave Naruto a deadpan look, as he went off about all the things he could teach a genin team. Sigh what Naruto was trying to say was, we found the troll and had Harley and Hermione take care of it, in order to see how far they had progressed in training. Gara said in his normal monotone voice. Suffice to say they excited our expectations. Yes well, while it is true they surpassed our expectations, I believe we should get them back to bed before the pass out, Kamimro said motioning towards the two girls who were swaying on their feet. With a nod of understanding, all of the teachers still in shock, Dumbledore motioned for them to return the two girls to their beds before he turned to look at the unconscious troll, wondering what would happen later in the year with the shinobi running around. Yes, it worked. Naruto cheered as he stood on the edge of the lake with Harley and the other shinobi, the ground under him coated in ice from his chakra. It had been about a week since the Halloween incident, and everything had returned to normal, or as normal as things got at Hogwarts. After getting Ron back for making Hermione cry, he had hung him upside down in the entrance hall, dressed in a pink honesty that made him look like a rabbit thing had gone back to normal. Though Naruto and Harley were now joining in Quidditch practice with the rest of their house teams using the two new Nimbus 2000 that had arrived for them the day after the troll incident, but it only works for us, Harley said as from behind Naruto, a patch of ice under her feet as well, the Saturday after the troll incident Naruto had announced that the polyjuice potion was finally done, and that they would be seeing if his theory of obtaining Keke Genkai from this would work. His theory had been right, partly, the polyjuice potion had worked in transferring Haku's ice release, though only Naruto, Harley and Gara managed to retain the bloodline after the transformation was over. Still, it worked. Naruto grinned as he held up a tray with four goblets, two of which were cement-colored, while the other two resembled blood. Harley, these are two more cups of polyjuice potion, one containing a hair from Kamimuro and Nagato. Why are there only four? She asked looking at the tray curiously. Well, Gara didn't want the Shikatsumiyaku if this worked like I thought, and Uncle Nagato said that if it did work, only me and you were allowed to get the Rinnegan, Harley blinked at that. 
Nagato was going to trust them with the Rinnegan. During her study into the shinobi world as well as the wizarding world, Harley had learned about the different types of bloodlines there were, namely the three that were most sought after, the Byakugan, which could see 360 degrees around the user, and could see chakra points, the Sharingan, which could copy almost anything, then finally the Rinnegan, which gave the user all five chakra natures and advanced chakra control. Though the Rinnegan had only been seen a few times in history, the first being the Sage of Six Paths and the second being Nagato. Are you sure it's a good idea? She asked looking at the four goblets. Yeah, trust me, I have a feeling this will help us both in the future, with a small sigh. Harley took the two goblets Naruto handed her before downing the one from Kamimro first. So, you're telling me my eyes are transplants? Naruto nodded as he leaned against the wall of Nagato's office a few hours later. Glancing at his reflection in the window, his eyes were both red with three tomos in each eye, which morphed into a new shape before morphing again into the Rinnegan, before morphing back and deactivating. Yeah, though the question is, how? Naruto wondered as he practiced with his new dejutsu. After drinking the goblet which turned them into copies of Kamimuro, both Naruto and Harley learned to use the basics of the dead bone pulse from the last member of the Kagaya clan. Once their hour as Kamimuro was up, which left them with the powerful Kekei Genkai, the two had taken the potion containing Nagato's hair, which did give them the Rinnegan. It was after their hour as Nagato ended that they discovered that his Rinnegan were transplants. Once the transformation ended both Harley and Naruto returned to normal without the Rinnegan, confusing the male Jinchuriki, until he channeled Chakra to his eyes, which morphed into a fully matured Sharingan, which confused him, since Nagato was an Uzumaki, not an Ichiha. I don't know, though I don't think it matters anymore. Harley, who had been sitting on a couch and reading a book about Animagus and trying to come up with a counter-argument for Kayubi's nagging, that she should just transform into a fox. So you're not worried that someone gave you your Rinnegan without your knowledge? Nagato glanced at her with a thoughtful look before shaking his head in the negative. No, if I had found out about this when I was younger then maybe. But after surviving against people like Hansm the Salamander and working with a number of S-ranked nuke nin, most of whom would kill you for looking at them funny, I've come to accept that I have the Rinnegan and have stopped wondering how I got them. Nagato chuckled at her stunned expression. Though I do have to wonder whose eyes they were, of course that can wait for later. For now we should start your training on how to use the Rinnegan, at the smirk that appeared on Nagato's face, both Jinchuriki shivered. Come on Harley, you need to eat something, Ron said as he tried to get Harley to eat. I'm not hungry, Hermione looked at her friend with a worried expression, today was the day of her Quidditch match as the Gryffindor Seeker, and she would be playing against Naruto. Look Harley, you need to eat something especially since you're playing against Naruto. Haku said, trying to get Harley to eat, while glancing over towards the Slytherin table, where Naruto was eating with the rest of the Slytherin team. Even if we know he's not going to be trying, Naruto's going to be a challenge, so you need all the energy you can get. I know, but I'm too nervous to eat, she said also glancing over at Naruto. Yes she knew he wasn't going to be trying today, or in any of the matches he played in. But that didn't mean Naruto was going to go easy on her. Hell he had told her the night before, that if she wanted to win, she was going to have to work for it. After what seemed like hours to Harley, she, along with the rest of the Gryffindor team, headed down to the pitch, though as she passed the Slytherin table, she caught Naruto's eye, a shiver running down her spine at the challenging gleam in his eye. The crowd cheered as the two teams shot into the air, Naruto and Harley rising higher than all of the others as they began circling the field. As the wind whipped her hair around her, Harley felt a huge weight lift from her as she began soaring, the feeling of freedom consuming her as she glanced around the Quidditch field, hunting for the snitch, her new Sharingan activating instinctually. Well, you seem to be in better spirits than you were in at breakfast, glancing over her shoulder she saw Naruto coming up behind him. I don't know why, but I just feel so free up here, she said, a playful smirk crossing her face as Naruto finally caught up to her, his own Sharingan activated. Well then care to see how free you really feel up here, both smirked before shooting of, racing around the field as they searched for the small golden snitch. What's this, it seems both seekers have already spotted the snitch, at the words of the commentator. A Gryffindor named Lee Jordan everyone turned to watch as two blurs raced across the pitch, though the match had just started, neither team had even made a goal yet. 
As they neared the opposite end of the field the two shot into different directions in order to search, Harley looking for the ball while Naruto glanced over in the direction he saw Quirrell sitting. Looking up at Harley, a sudden burst of magical energy coming from him. Naruto's attention suddenly shifted to Harley as the entire crowd gasped, there, nearly a hundred feet above the ground, Harley was hanging from her broom, which was twitching and jerking wildly as she hung on. With a growl of frustration at Quirrell's actions, Naruto swiped a hand at the defense teacher, shooting a bone from his fingertip, before shooting up towards Harley, missing the scared look that appeared on Quirrell's face, as the projectile missed his head by inches, a small cut appearing on his cheek from the force of it passing him breaking his eye contact. As Naruto reached her, Harley managed to pull herself onto her broom before racing towards the ground, Naruto who realized what she was after following her. Though he didn't really care about the match, both headed towards the small golden ball fluttering feet from the ground. Another loud gasp rang out from the crowd as, a few feet from the ground, Harley jumped of her broom and rolled a little, for a few seconds everyone watched as Harley heaved, before spitting something into her hand, which she held up, revealing it to be the snitch. Well, that was an interesting first match, Haku said an hour later, as he sat in Hagrid's cabin with Naruto, Harley Hermion and Ron, as they celebrated Harley's first victory as Seeker, and her first victory over Naruto. Yeah, I still can't believe it, we beat Slyther in 170 to 60, Ron said with a wide annoying grin. What I want to know is why Corel was trying to jinx Harley's broom, Hermione said bringing up a good point. What do you mean? Ron asked getting a sigh from everyone, minus Hagrid who looked just as confused. When Harley's broom was trying to throw her off Corel was muttering an incantation, though he broke eye contact with her before I could move to stop him, Naruto chuckled at that. Yeah, that was my doing, I saw what he was doing and fired a digit at him, since he broke contact, that means I either hit him or scared the shit out of him, the four chuckled at that, while Hagrid and Ron shared a confused glance. Alright, let's try it again, Naruto said as he stood in one of the more spacious dungeons with Harley, who was panting and glaring at Naruto. Taking a calming breath and closing her eyes, Harley allowed her magic to flow through her before she began to change, slowly crouching. Harley tensed as russet red fur grew all over her body, her hands changed into paws, her face elongated into a muzzle, and a tail slowly grew. Alright Harley, very good, you can transform without any problems, though you're still bigger than a normal fox, Naruto said as a wolf-sized fox glared at him, before changing back to Harley. It's not my fault, besides, you're the same size when you change, she snapped getting a small smirk from Naruto. Sigh I know and I'm not complaining, I just can't figure out why we're so big when we change, he scratched the back of his head in confusion. It had been about a month since the Quidditch match, and everything had calmed down after the exciting match, the classes had begun to pick up as they began learning more complex things, for first years anyways. Even Nagato's class had become more entertaining. Though that was mainly because the shinobi, Harley and Hermione sat and watched, as the other students tired themselves out within an hour, which they considered embarrassing since Hermione, who was still a bookworm, could last more than an hour, hell when Nagato ranked them, he said that Harley and Hermione could easily pass as genin, and they were only getting stronger. Currently both Naruto and Harley were practicing their animagus transformation, which were not as they were expecting, after a lot of talking about what would be the best animal to turn into, and a lot of input from both Kyubis, the two had taken the form of foxes, though for some reason they couldn't figure out, they were both the size of wolves. Well, we can always figure it out over Christmas, Harley said letting out a sigh of her own, before a smile crossed her face, this would be her first Christmas away from the Dursleys, and the first Christmas she would be spending with people who actually treated her like family. Yeah, I suppose so, though it would be nice to know, Naruto sighed before smirking. By the way, I hope you're packed and ready to go. The minute term ends we're out of here. What are you talking about? Harley asked in confusion as the two left the dungeon and headed towards the great hall for dinner. Didn't Haku tell you, once the holidays get here you, me and Kamimuro are headed to the elemental nations, he smirked at her stunned expression. Yeah, my mom and aunt want to meet you, so we're headed for the land of rice, before heading to one of the five hidden villages, Kurigekur. But I thought Kiri was in the middle of a civil war, Harley was stunned, she was going to meet Naruto's family, she had heard about his mom, mainly from Kamimuro, but she hadn't heard about any of Naruto's other family. No, we just keep that going so that they can rebuild, if other villages knew how weak Kiri was right now, war would break out faster than anything. 
Harley nodded in understanding, that did make sense keep the war going while rebuilding, then when the war is over, they would be back at full strength in case anyone attacked them. I see, that makes sense, but who are your family, I thought you only had your mom in Nagato? Naruto gained a small smile. At first I did, but when I was about nine, I met up with my aunt Mei Terumi, she was Kishina's half-sister, though she was born in Kiri, I saved her from a group of bloodline haters, and, with mom's help managed to retake Kiri, he gained small smirk, as the memories of his time in Kiri flashed through his mind. So, you have your mom, Nagato and this aunt, any other relatives? She asked, though she hoped she wasn't being too pushy. Well, I guess you'll just have to wait and find out, he smirked as they entered the great hall before heading up towards the Slytherin table, leaving her to head for her own house table, twitching in annoyance. Well, here we are, the Kurigakur no Sato, the village hidden in the mist, Harley looked around in awe as she followed Naruto through the village, Kamimura walking a few feet behind them. It was the start of the Christmas holiday, and Harley was in complete awe at the sight of one of the hidden villages after the last day of the term. Her, Naruto and Kamimuro, had gathered in Professor Dumbledore's office where they took a port key that Dumbledore had gotten for them, which took them into the heart of the hidden sound village. Upon arriving at the village, Naruto had been informed by a man named Kabuto that his mom was currently in the land of the sea, checking on an old lab they had abandoned a number of years ago. With this knowledge, the three of them headed out to meet the rest of Naruto's family, which lead the three of them to Kurigakur. Wow, this place is amazing. Harley said as she glanced around, many people in the streets nodding at them or waving at Naruto and Kamimuro, who simply ignored everything. Yes, even though it is going through some rough patches right now, Kiri is one of the strongest of the five great hidden villages, mainly because of all of the different elemental bloodlines, Kamimuro said looking around. He could remember growing up in the village, where he was seen as a monster for his bloodline by those that feared bloodlines. Yeah, and with my mom's research on bloodlines and her practice in other areas Kiri has risen back up from the ashes of the blood purge, Naruto smirked, since it was true, after getting Mei into the position of Mizukage, Medusa had offered to help Kiri in exchange for samples of different bloodlines from the village. Once she had a sample of the different bloodlines, she began an old experiment of injecting DNA samples into children, which was helped along with Naruto's use of magic. Thanks to the combined might of Naruto's magic and Medusa's knowledge, they were able to successfully create a serum that would make the bloodline bond to the person, though it only worked with elemental bloodlines. That and the recovery of the missing blades from the Seven Swordsmen were almost back to full power. The three stopped as a new voice joined the conversation. Looking up to a nearby roof they saw the speaker, a woman with long, red hair and black eyes, she also wore a simple cloth around her head along with a Kiri forehead protector. Distinctively tied at both sides so as the ends of the material protrude upwards while the remainder of hair is allowed to flow downwards she wore a loose pinstripe long-sleeved shirt with a dark obi around the waist black pants which got much looser near the ends resembling hakama and striped leg warmers bandages loosely tied around the neck and had jagged teeth. Good to see you again Gaki, been a while since you stopped by. Aunt Emiuri, what are you doing here? Naruto asked as the woman jumped of the building and landed right next to Naruto. We got reports that you were back in town, so Mei sent me to escort you to her office, she's got a mission for you if you're up for it. Naruto blinked at that. He was in the village for less than five minutes, and already Mei had a mission lined up for him, meaning it was a high-level mission. Well, we're on vacation right now, but depending on the mission I might take it. Nodding in understanding Aim led the group to the Mizukage's tower. Oh Naruto, it's so good to see you again, I've missed you so much, Harley held back her laughter as Naruto was being suffocated by an older woman, whom she assumed was Mei. Mei was a tall, slender woman, with green eyes and ankle length, auburn hair styled into a herringbone pattern at the back, a top knot tied with a dark blue band, and with four bangs at the front. She was wearing a long-sleeved, dark blue dress that falls just below the knees, a mesh armor that covers slightly more of her upper body than her dress, a skirt in the same color as her dress, and, underneath those, mesh leggings reaching down over her knees. Mei can't breathe, Naruto choked out as he struggled to get free from his aunt's bone-crushing hug. Dropping Naruto, Mei turned her eyes onto Harley, who tensed up at the predatorily smirk that appeared on Mei's face. And who might this be? A friend you made at school, Mei appeared behind Harley, inspecting her like a piece of meat. Kabuto said you were making friends at this school when he gave me an update on you. 
but he never said how attractive they were, and how would Kabuto know that? Naruto glanced at Kamimro, who gave him a blank look before shaking his head. Um, I'm Harley Potter, it's nice to meet you, Harley said a little nervously as Mei walked around her, still inspecting her. It's nice to meet you Harley, I think we're going to be good friends, both Naruto and Harley shuddered at the smile Mei was wearing, but before that, Naruto, I have a mission for you. Sensing the seriousness in her voice, Naruto stood at attention while Harley looked curiously at him. A week ago, we received word that one Kisum Hashigaki would be headed for the Land of Waves, apparently he was hired for a mission to kill a bridge builder who had gone to Kanoha for help, your mission is to head to Wave and kill Kissam, reclaim the Samahata, and kill a shipping tycoon by the name of Gato, who has attempted to take control of the Land of Waves, Mei said getting a nod from Naruto, alright, I accept besides I've been wanting to test out some new tricks, Naruto smirked as his eyes morphed into the Sharingan, surprising Mei, before they returned to normal. Naruto ran through the trees of the Land of Waves, headed in the direction of a rather large chakra source, he had arrived in Wave nearly an hour ago by apparating, after arriving he tracked down and killed the fat little pig by the name of Gato, before he felt a large surge of chakra. So this is what I get for accepting this stupid mission, a lazy jonin and a bunch of fresh out of the academy genin. Naruto stopped on a branch overlooking a small lake where Kisum stood, while looking at a team from Kanoha and an old man. I was hoping to have some fun with this. Then why don't you turn around fish face? Kisum gained a small twitch as he turned to face Naruto, the team from Kanoha also turning to face the boy. So, the little snake boy came to play, is your mommy hiding somewhere close by? Naruto twitched at that before pointing his wand at the swordsman. No, she doesn't have time to deal with dead fish, besides she's not the one who sent me. Naruto pointed his wand at Samahata, which leapt of Kissam's back and flew into Naruto's outstretched hand. The Mizukid asked me to come and retrieve Samahata from you, and since I'm in a rush, I figured I'd kill you fast. Avada Kedavra Kissam jumped out of the way, missing the green jet of light by inches. Seeing as this fight wasn't going to be easy, Naruto put his wand away and leapt of the tree to hover high above the lake, his renegan activated. So, you want to play hide and seek? Very well then, let's play. Naruto fired another jet of green light at Kissam, when a water bullet he fired Miss Naruto. For the next few minutes the two continued firing attacks at each other Kissam staying at a distance and firing water bullets while Naruto hovered in the air firing of the Avada Kedavra curse, the Kanoha team and old man having left when Naruto arrived. Alright, this is getting annoying, and is really cutting in on my holiday, Naruto growled out as he apparated behind Kissam, who had a stunned look on his face, before blasting him with the killing cures, one Kissam was dead, Naruto cut off his head and sealed it away, burnt the body, and apparated back to Kiri. Sigh this is really relaxing. Harley sighed as she relaxed in the Mizukage's private open air bath along with Mei, Emiuri, and Medusa. It was the last day of their Christmas and Harley had to admit, this was her best Christmas ever. After Naruto completed his mission for Mei, the older woman had dragged the two around Kiri, showing them the sights and buying Harley some shinobi wear, which she had Naruto pay for. A week after they had arrived in Kiri, Naruto's mom, Medusa, arrived and was very interested in Harley, mainly the fact that she now housed part of Kyubi. After meeting Medusa, they spent the rest of the holiday training, since Shinobi didn't really have holidays, though they did enjoy a lot of time going to different places, mainly the different bases Medusa had around the elemental nations, before they returned to Kiri. I know, it's the best hot springs in the village, Mei said as she drank a cup of sake she had brought into the bath, so tell me Harley, what exactly is your relationship with Naruto? What do you mean, we're just friends? Harley blushed as she tried to avoid the question the three had been randomly asking her during the entire break. You know, you can't lie to us, we're all trained shinobi, so we know a lie when someone tells it to us, Aang said as the three older women moved in around her. You don't have to lie to us, we just want to know what you think of Naruto, Medusa said with a smirk, while she might not have been what one would call a conventional mother, she did in fact care for Naruto, and wanted him to be happy. Well to be honest, I'm not sure what my feeling are for him, he's my first friend, and I don't want to lose that, but other than that, I don't know, she said as the three older women nodded in understanding. Naruto had written and told them everything he had found out about Harley in her past, that's alright, we understand, we just want him to be happy, which is something you seem to make him, Mei said with a smile as she leaned back in the water, allowing her breast to float on top of the water, 
as did Medusa and Aim, getting a twitch from Harley. Naruto let out a small sigh as he patrolled the fence of May's private bathhouse since there had been reports of a man with long white hair peeping at the public bathhouse. Man, why do they have to interrogate her like this? Naruto wondered as he tried to ignore his aunts and mom interrogating his friend. Because, they know you're listening and think it's amusing, Kayubi said as if it were obvious. Besides it looks like you might have bigger things to worry about, there's an old toad at 3 o'clock. Naruto looked in the direction Kayubi mentioned to see, an old man with long spiky white hair crouched in a tree with a spyglass and giggling like crazy. Oh no you don't. No one gets to peek at May, Aim or Harley, but me, Petrifkas Tautilus. The old man froze as Naruto's curse hit him, causing him to fall out of the tree. Naruto, what was that noise? Medusa called from over the fence. Nothing mom just caught a pervert, Naruto said as he kicked the petrified man onto his back before kicking him in in the nets upon realizing who it was. Hey mom, your old pervert of a teammate's here, what do you want me to do with him? For a few minutes there was silence on the other side of the fence before he heard splashing as someone moved over to the fence. Naruto dear, I need you to take Jiraiya to my office and hold him there until we arrive. I will decide what to do with him then. Jiraiya began to sweat as a sinister smile appeared on Naruto's face. Naruto was wearing a large grin on his face as he levitated Jiraiya of the Sanin in front of his mom and aunts, who were all preparing to us him as a pinata. Aim was going to be using her Kiba blades, his mom would be using her Kusanagi, and Mei was using Samahata. Um, shouldn't we stop them? Harley asked as the three Kinoichi began beating the old pervert. No, nah, from what I understand, this type of thing happens to the old pervert every time. He's in that hellhole of a village, both Jinchuriki flinched, as Jiraiya began shrieking in pain as the three beat him into the ground before Mei had a team of mist take him to the Kiri T and I department, Naruto, having already put a chakra seal on him. Well that was enjoyable, Mei said with a smile as she sat at her desk before Kamimro entered with an old tin can, which was glowing blue. But it looks like our time together is almost up. Now before you all go I have something for you and Harley, Naruto, Mei stood up and pulled out a scroll from which she unsealed a long needle-like sword. Harley, this is called the Nabari, it is one of the seven swords of the mist, this sword marks you as a member of Kiri's seven swordsmen along with Naruto and Haku. Harley stared at the sword in awe as she accepted it from Mei, along with a Kiri headband. Naruto, I am entrusting Semihata to you. Seeing as she likes your chakra, I am also entrusting you with these scrolls, she handed him a scroll with the Kiri symbol on it. This scroll gives instruction on the hidden mist jutsu as well as some other jutsu that are secret to Kiri, they are for you too and Haku, I want you to learn them, and master the by the time the school year ends, I have already talked it over with Medusa, and we will be entering you in this year's Chunin selection exam, which will take place a week after the school year ends. Wait, you're going to enter the three of yous as a Kiri team? Naruto glanced at his mom in confusion. Yes, you three will be entered under Kiri as a way to hide your affiliation with the hidden sound. Don't want that to get out just yet. Medusa smirked before pulling out her own scroll and handing it to Harley. I also have something for Harley. I would like her to sign the snake summoning contract. Harley stared at the contract for a few seconds, teared welling in her eyes before thanking Medusa as she signed the contract. Once she had signed and returned the contract to Medusa, the three Hogwarts students grabbed the port key, which would take them back to Hogwarts, wondering what would happen next. Naruto let out a long yawn as he sat in a tree branch, watching as the other first years struggled to complete their final exam for Nagato, which was to kill a rabbit they had been taking care of since Christmas. After the three had returned to Hogwarts, Naruto had told Nagato about Mei's plan to enter them into the Chunin exams, which Nagato agreed on, before he spotted a giant problem, Harley had never killed before and forcing her to take an exam where killing was a big part of the second course was not a good idea, since she could essentially freeze after making an accidental kill and get herself killed. With that problem pointed out, Nagato had come up with a solution, he had all of the students in each year take care of a rabbit, which would be part of their end-of-the-year exam, which confused most people since they didn't see the point of taking care of rabbits or how it pertained to physical training. Over the course of the next few months Naruto watched as everyone in the castle took care of the rabbits they had been assigned, even the Slytherins were doing a great job in caring for them creatures. Well, this is a pain to watch, Gara said as he stood upside down on the branch Naruto was sitting on, both watching as Ron stumbled away from his rabbit, before falling to his knees and releasing the content of his stomach. 
Yeah, though Harley and Hermione performed a lot better than I had expected, I thought they would be like most of the other students and freeze after killing their rabbit since we didn't tell them what was going to happen to the rodents. Gara glanced over at Harley, who was training with Haku to use Kubakirabacho. They had traded swords when Haku found that the Nabari fit in perfectly with his crystal ice mirror jutsu, and Harley found she had an unusual knack for wielding the head cleaver. You're right, while they did have the same reaction as Ron and the others that have already passed they got over it a lot more quickly, Gara chuckled at that. When all of the first years had gathered on the grounds for their end of year exam, all of them had assumed that Nagato was going to use the two hours for the exam to check and make sure all of their rabbits were healthy enough to pass. Imagine their surprised look when Nagao pulled out five kunai, which he threw to the ground before telling them that to pass his exam, they had to kill the rabbit within the two-hour time slot in order to pass. Everyone stared at him in horror at what he had informed them the exam was, and their horror rose as Naruto and the other shinobi stepped forward and slit their rabbit's throat without even batting an eye before they moved over to the trees to watch. The horrified expressions only increased as Harley and Hermione slowly stepped forward and slit the throats of their own rabbits. Before they ran over to the trees and vomited, tear tracks running down their cheeks. Over the next hour only five other first years had managed to complete the exam. The first was Neville, much to everyone's surprise, followed by Hannah Abbott from Hufflepuff, a girl named Sue Lee from Ravenclaw, and Draco Malfoy of Slytherin, with Ron being the fifth student. By the way, how's Harley's investigation into what Fluffy's guarding coming along? After finding out about Fluffy, Hermione and Harley had been hard at work trying to find out everything they could about what the dog might be guarding, seeing as Hagrid had told them it was guarding something for Nicola's flamel. Sigh they found out that Fluffy's guarding the Sorcerer's Stone. Though they did seem a little upset when they found out we already knew about the stone, Naruto shuddered at the memory, both girls had chased him all over Hogwarts, Harley was actually channeling Kyubi's chakra, giving her a feral appearance, and both hurling kunai at him. I told you, you should have told them about it sooner, Naruto nodded, knowing that Gara wouldn't drop the subject until he did. On a related note, Haku told me that Hermione Harley and Ron planned to go after the stone tonight, since that's Quirrell plans to make his move. Sound like fun, do you think we should follow them? Gara glanced at Naruto before letting out a sigh. I think it would be good for you to follow them and keep an eye on them, but don't interfere. This could be a good way to test their abilities, Naruto nodded in agreement, it would be interesting to see just how far they have come. Well now, this is interesting, Naruto smirked as he watched Ron direct the pieces of McGonagall's giant chess set. Seems Ron's a born strategist, what do you think Haku? I don't know, he does seem to understand his opponent's movements, but how would he react in a real fight with his life on the line? or the life of his friends, they watched as Ron directed them, before they saw a problem. Well it looks like he's in a small bind here, Eno said from Naruto's other side. In order for them to win the game now, Ron will have to sacrifice himself, or risk losing Harley after this turn. The three shinobi watched in silence, wondering what Ron would do, before they all smirked as Ron sacrificed himself, allowing Harley to take out the king. Eno, I want you to take care of Ron, make sure he's alright, me and Haku will follow those too. Naruto pointed as Harley and Hermione proceeded to the next room after moving Ron to a more secure location. With a nod of her head, Eno moved over and began checking on Ron, while Naruto and Haku followed the two into the next room, both of them sticking to the shadows. So, what will you do now that you're confronted with the one who killed your parents? Naruto wondered as he watched from the shadows as Harry stared into the red eyes of his father, or what was left of him. After leaving the chess room, Naruto and Haku followed the two into a room where upon entering, magical flames appeared in both doors, trapping the two. After a few minutes, in which time Hermione deciphered the note that Snape had left for whoever entered the room, Harley moved ahead through the black flames, while Hermione headed back to check on Ron, once they were gone, Naruto had Haku return before following after Harley. Upon entering the final room, Naruto watched the interaction between Quirrell and Harley, in which time Harley managed to get the stone, before Voldemort decided to reveal himself to her, shocking the girl. Will you give in to his request and give him the stone or will you resist and make kill Quirrell, forcing Voldemort to leave? Naruto questioned, wondering just what Harley would do against the man that had attacked her out of fear. Harley stared wide-eyed at the form of Voldemort, 
Who was sticking out of the back of Quirrell's head? His red slitted eyes, cold and uncaring, nothing like Naruto's, were boring into her, as if he was trying to will her to give him the stone. So, this is my other half's father, not much of a threat if you ask me. Harley jumped as Kayubi began talking, she had forgotten that Kayubi could talk to her when she wanted to, both her and Naruto were surprised when they learned that both Kayubis were female, both taking on the gender of their first host, Mito Yuzumaki. Yeah well, he was and still is considered the greatest dark wizard of the century, Kayubi chuckled at her response, apparently finding something in her words to be amusing, if this thing is truly the greatest dark wizard of the century, then imagine what you and the boy could become, Harley blinked at her words, was Kayubi implying that Er and Naruto would become dark wizards, or was she just trying to mess with her, after all, Naruto had told her, good and evil are just a state of mind, there is no real good or evil, just the choices people make and how others see those choices. You know it's funny, Voldemort and Naruto quirked an eyebrow, wondering what she found funny. For a minute there, I was scared of you, why I don't know, but I admit it, I was terrified, but then the question hit me, why am I terrified, you have no power, no will, you're sharing the body of some half-rated hack, I just can't figure out why I was scared. Naruto was struggling not to laugh at the irritated look on his dad's face. I mean, I can see you being terrifying back when you had a body, but now, she summoned the Kubakirabacho from a seal on her wrist, as it turned out she was rather good when it came to seals. I just don't see it, you may have been a great wizard when you did have a body, but now, you're just some washed up hack, she stabbed the head cleaver into the ground before running through hand signs, water style, hidden miss jutsu. Naruto smirked and activated his rin again, as mist began to fill the room. Thanks to the moisture from the air, he was having a hard time not laughing, as Voldemort and Quirrell began to panic, trying to clear the mist with his wand. You know there are eight vital points on the human body, these points, upon being hit, are instant death, and while I may not remember all eight, I do know an easy way to hit one of the easiest ones, Petrifkus Totalus, Quirrell's body froze as the spell hit him his eyes darting around in terror, while Voldemort's eyes were flashing with both fear and anger. This is the end Quirrell's eyes widened as Harley appeared in front of him before swinging the Kubakirabacho, removing his head from his body. Not bad Harley, not bad at all. Naruto said as he walked into the chamber, the mist clearing to show Harley releasing the contents of her stomach next to the headless professor. And good job on your first kill. How are you feeling now that you've taken a human life? Harley looked at him, her eyes were red with tears in them, before she lunged at him, holding him tight as more tears began to silently flow. It's alright Harley, just let it out, he rubbed her back trying to calm her down, before a strange cloud began rising up from Quirrell's head, before it rushed at them, knocking Harley out as it passed through them. I see, so Voldemort was acting through Quirrell in order to get the stone, hoping to use it to restore his body. It was nearing dawn, and Naruto was sitting next to the bed Harley was occupying in the hospital wing, he had just finished telling Dumbledore and Nagato everything he had witnessed while down in the chamber, from Harley getting the stone to making her first kill in battle. Yeah, and I can understand why he would want the stone, the way most wizards use it would give him a body, and let him live for another hundred years or so. Naruto tossed the stone into the air before catching it, holding it up to the morning light, letting it cast a blood-red glow on him. I take it that you've got a different theory on how to use the stone? Nagato asked, eyeing the red rock that had been Voldemort's goal. Yeah, I've been doing research on it, since Harley and the other two began trying to find out about it, as I say most people use it mainly for gaining immortality and turning objects into gold, however there are other uses such as boosting one's powers, Nagato's eyes widened as he saw where Naruto was headed, you plan to use it to boost the creations of all things technique, and create bodies for the two halves of Kyubi you and Harley hold, Naruto smirked his uncle could read him like a book most of the times, yeah, and not just Kyubi, as you know I've been in contact with a few of the other Jinchuriki, like Yujido, Fu, and B, Nagato nodded, he did remember meeting the three with Naruto when he was younger, well, over the holidays while on my mission to get Samahata, I stopped in to see Fu and Yujido, and I activated their magical cores with the condition that they come here next year, both the Rakage and the leader of Taki agreed to the request. So, you plan to bring them here and release the Biju from them, and I assume you want to use the Polyjuice potion on them like you did with you and Harley, before you free the Nibi and Nanabi. Naruto's smirk didn't tell Nagato what he wanted to know. In a sense yes, that is my plan, 
but not in its entirety, Nagato narrowed his eyes at Naruto, before smirking, he was a schemer just like his mom, and he was determined just like an Uzumaki, alright, just try not to do anything reckless, Naruto nodded as Dumbledore and Nagato left the hospital wing, leaving Naruto and Harley alone, man I'm so nervous, Harley muttered as she looked out the window of the Hogwarts Express, as it headed back towards London, Naruto was sitting next to her playing a game of wizard chest against Haku while Hermione read a book, and Ino slept against the wall. After Harley had woken up, which was on the last day of the term for some strange reason, Naruto had told her he would be joining her as she met up with her aunt and uncle in order to let them know that he would be taking her back to Odo in order for them to compete in the exam. What's there to be nervous about? We're going to be talking to a walrus, a walking stick, and the whale that somehow came from their union. Nothing to fear everyone, especially Harley, had to stop themselves from bursting out laughing at Naruto's description of her relatives. By the way, has anyone seen Gara or Kamimura lately? Kamimura was sitting with Malfoy and his friends, I think he may be going to meet Mr. Malfoy, and set up some form of communication between us, that's more effective than owls, Haku said moving his queen, which was taken by Naruto's knight. Gara was sitting with a few Hufflepuffs, I think he might even have a thing for one of the girls in his house, Hannah Abbott I think, Naruto gave Haku a disbelieving look, Gara having a crush on someone was a very strange concept, especially considering that until Naruto beat some sense into him. He was an unstable Jinchuriki who would kill anyone he wanted, just for looking at him wrong. You know that's a little hard to swallow, Haku nodded his head as Naruto moved his rook cornering his king. Why, people can change, even Gara Hermion said looking at Naruto disapprovingly for doubting his friend, her, and Harley had been told about all of their pasts to an extent, from Naruto's watching his mother's experiments to Gara's old behavior of killing people who annoyed him. I know that, it's just hard to imagine Gara liking someone like that, Harley gave Hermione a drop it look, knowing that nothing the bushy-haired girl said would make any difference. Sighing in defeat, Hermione went back to her book, as the discussion moved from Gara actually liking someone, to strategies the three could use during the exam, Medusa having told Naruto that the first part was all about information gathering and cheating. As the train pulled into the station Harley took a deep breath trying to steal her nerves, she wasn't nervous about how the Dursleys would behave, she could already picture that in her mind, no, she was nervous about how Naruto would behave, since he grew up in an environment where it was basically survival of the fittest. Nervous? Naruto chuckled as Harley glared at him. No, I'm just curious as to how you'll act around my aunt and uncle, I may not like them, but they are still my family, and I don't really want you to hurt them, Naruto chuckled at that, he found her worry rather cute. Don't worry, I won't kill them, if I did I'd have to destroy this entire city, because the older witches and wizards would try to stop me, and that would just end up with a big war between me and the magical community, that I really don't feel like fighting right now. Harley gave him a disbelieving look before she chuckled at his weird sense of humor as they followed the K onto the platform. Before moving out into the muggle world, after exiting the barrier that separated the platform from the muggles Harley looked around for her family, before spotting them standing next to Mrs. Weasley and a small red-headed girl that was looking excitedly at Harley as Ron appeared next to them. Well I'll see you in Diagon Ally when it's time to get our school books for next year's Ron said with a smile. He had invited Harley and Hermione over for the summer, and had even offered an invitation to Naruto, though they politely refused, Naruto informing him about them taking the Chunin exams, which Ron actually seemed interested in. Ready are you? Naruto stared at the man Harley informed him was her Uncle Vernon, as the small group made it over to them, he was fatter than Jirobo, and that was saying something seeing as he was the fattest person Naruto knew. Alright. I was wrong in my earlier statement, he's not a walrus, I think elephant works better, Harley had to stop herself from laughing at the angry twitch that appeared on her uncle. Who the bloody hell are you? The elephant snarled getting a smirk from Naruto, who activated his Sharingan, startling the man. Tsukiyomi, Naruto said as he peered into Vernon's eyes, not noticing as Harley activated her own Sharingan and entered the Tsukiyomi as well. Where am I? What the bloody hell am going on here? Vernon panicked as he stood in a forest clearing, everything was black and white, and the sky was blood red with a matching moon. You know, I should thank you, I've been looking for someone to try this technique out on, and you even helped prove a theory I had. Vernon turned as Naruto, and Harley appeared standing calmly as if this happened every day. See, I was right, if we both used Tsukiyomi on the same person we both enter the illusion, 
Yes, you were right. Now can we please get this over with? I think this is putting a lot of strain on my mind, because I'm getting a headache? Naruto nodded at her request. Honestly he was getting a headache too. Must be because Tsukiyomi was only meant to hold the caster in the target. Girl, what the hell is going on? The two looked over at Vernon who was starting to become annoyed. Simple, we're basically here to tell you that I will no longer be living on Privet Drive. Vernon blinked at that. It was not something he was expecting. The reason we're returned on the train like this was so that we could go and get my things from your home. Before we head up to where I will be living, a village called Karigakur, so you won't have to worry about me or my strangeness ever again. Vernon simply blinked before Naruto broke the illusion. Vernon blinked as everything returned to normal, before noticing that no time seemed to have passed. Alright, now I know why Itachi doesn't use his manjekyo all the time. Vernon turned to see both Naruto and Harley rubbing their eyes. The strain is a bitch, and the headache that follows is pain in the ass. It can't be helped, we never did practice with jutsu, Harley said as her vision blurred for a few seconds before returning. I told you, you should have trained with those after you got them, Haku said only to dodge a shuriken from Harley, who was not in the mood to listen to Haku. Shaking his head to clear it, Naruto motioned for Vernon to lead the way to his car, which he did without question, before waving to Hermione. As the three wizards followed the Dursleys, both Petunia and Dudley confused by Vernon's odd behavior. Ah good, you're all here, May smiled as Naruto, Harley and Haku apparated into her office. Did you have a good school year? It was interesting to say the least, Naruto said as he leaned against a wall, while Harley took a seat across from May. I take it your family was alright with you leaving like that? May glanced at Harley who smiled. They were a little stunned by it, but they accepted it in the end, May nodded, that made everything much easier. Good now I'll give you three time to rest, but we leave for Kanoha in two days, so be prepared, nodding in understanding, the three left in order to rest and prepare for the upcoming exam. Man, this is hilarious, who knew this would be so funny Naruto chuckled to himself as he sat in a tree within training ground 44, next to him Harley was watching in awe, and Haku was polishing his nabari, the three were watching as his mom played with the last Ichiha, it had been a little over a week since the three had returned to the hidden mist village, before they headed to Kanoha for the Chunin exams. The day after they arrived in Kanoha was the day of the first test which was meant to test their ability to gather information, which also knocked out a lot of the competition. The day after that was the start of the second exam, which was a no-holds-bar survival test, each team pitted against each other. About an hour after entering the forest, the three had met up with his mom and her teammates, who were really Tai and Seiken. So your mom is just testing those three? Naruto glanced at Harley, who was wearing a new shinobi outfit that Mei had picked out for her. She was wearing a pair of ambu style pants, a dark blue hiori, and her headband like a belt. That's right, since she wants the Ichiha as her next host body, she's testing him to see if he's qualified to be her next body. Harley nodded in understanding before turning back to watch the fight. Naruto had explained about his mom's soul transferring technique and how it worked. Well, it looks like he passed her test, Haku said glancing down as Medusa bit Sasuke on the neck, leaving her cure's mark on him, before she sank into the ground, heading off to rest. You're right, guess we should be going as well, with a nod from the other two, the three stood up before blurring away, headed for the tower in the center of the forest. My head hurts, Harley glanced over her shoulder at Naruto who was massaging his temples to get rid of his headache, around them were the teams that had passed the second stage of the Junin exams. It had been five days since the second exam had started, and in that time only a handful of teams had passed the exam, on the first day Naruto, Harley and Haku, who were later joined by Gara and his teammates, his siblings Tamari and Kankuro, were the first two teams to arrive. On the second day, Kanoha's teammate, which consisted of Kiba and Yuzuka, Hinata Hayuga, and Shino Aburam arrived followed soon after by the only team from Kumo, which held Yujido Nai, and her temporary teammates Karui and Amoi. On the third day Fu and her two teammates from Taki arrived followed by Kanoha's team 9, which consisted of Niji Hayuga, Tenten and Rock Lee. The fourth day had the sound team which consisted of Kin, Dosu, and Zaku arrive, followed by Kanoha's team 10, which consisted of Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi, and Ino, after kidnapping and awakening her magical core. Naruto had created his fist original jutsu, the blood clone, which was a combination of a shadow clone, water clone and mud clone, with the only way to dispel it being to kill it. 
Though it wouldn't dispel for a few days. Using Naruto's blood clone, Ino was able to stay and train with him and the others while her clone grew up in Kanoha, having been rescued by Jiraiya, who was investigating one of his mom's false bases. On the fifth and final day, Kanoha's Team 7, consisting of Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno, and Sai, arrived at the last minute along with Kabuto's team. Bringing the number of teams to pass the second stage of the exam to 10 teams, with 30 genin in all. Well, I told you not to have dispel that many clones at once, it's still too much of a strain on the mind. Haku reprimanded him, causing Harley to chuckle at the two. The previous day Naruto had created about 100 shadow clones to read through the Kanoha library. When he was ready to dispel them, Haku had suggested dispelling them five at a time, with ten minutes between each group. Naruto dispelled ten with five minutes between each group, giving him a massive headache from the information overload. Growling in irritation Naruto turned back to listen to the old Hokage, as he explained about the that because of the number of competitors left that they had to have preliminary matches. So who do you think will win the first match? The three wizard shinobi glanced up from their place in the balcony to see Yujito and Fu, Fu being the only genin remaining from Taki, walking over to them. Yujito had long blonde hair bound with taut bandages and dark eyes, she was wearing a pair of black pants, a black and purple blouse purple fingerless gloves and a kumo headband. Fu had spiky shoulder length mint green hair and bright orange eyes, she was wearing a white sleeveless midriff shirt with fishnet armor, long white armlets, and fishnet shorts under a white apron skirt. Yo, Yujito, Fu, glad to see you two here, Naruto smirked at them, getting a hug from Fu, and a nod from Yujito. So, who do you think will win? Yujito reiterated her question as they all looked back at the first match, Sasuke versus one of Kabuto's teammates Yoroi. The Uchiha, no question. Haku said as he leaned against the wall reading a book on transfiguration, while Sasuke engaged Yoroi in Tajutsu. Yeah, that's a given, though to be honest there's not that much competition left, Naruto said looking around at everyone who was remaining. Since Kabuto, both of Fu's team and Zaku pulled out, the number of people that would be considered a challenge has diminished. What do you mean? Harley asked in confusion, it may be due to the fact that she was still new to the shinobi lifestyle, but from what she could see everyone left in the room looked pretty tough. Well it's like this out of the 10 team to make it this far, which means 30 genin in all, 4 of them pulled out, 3 of them were at least jonin level, and the last I told to leave, which leaves 26 genin, the 5 nodded, showing that they were following along. Out of all of 26, the 5 of us and Gara have the most chance to move to the next round, despite the fact you've only been training as a shinobi for the past year. Harley blushed a little at that. That's already half of the finalists right there, then there's the Ichiha who just won his match, and if we have a draw like I think we will, that will leave five more spaces, Naruto's eyes began flicking around the arena. Out of everyone here there are only five other people I can see winning their matches, Ino, the Hyuga boy, the Aburam, Gara's sister, and Yujito's teammate, Amoi. You really think Karui will lose? Yujito asked with a raised eyebrow, glancing over at her temporary teammate. If her opponent is who I think it is, then yes, otherwise, I'm just guessing on everything here, the three girls gave him blank looks, while Haku chuckled, while he didn't look or act it. Naruto was a genius that could rival the entire Nara clan, and come out on top. Well, if Naruto said it then it's probably true, Haku said as the board showing the fighter stopped on his name, his opponent was Kankuro, who was looking a little nervous. This should be fun, with that he hopped into the arena, ready for his match. You know, I hate it when I'm right, Naruto muttered in annoyance, getting a chuckle out of Harley. It had been a few hours since the preliminaries had started, and so far everything Naruto had predicted had come true. After Sasuke had won his match, Haku had faced off against Kankuro, whom he beat rather fast, using a body bind cures on him, so as not to show his true skills, after that Ino went up against Karui in one using stunning spell, which confused all of the Kanoha shinobi, minus the Hokage, who had been told about Ino attending Hogwarts. The third match was between Shino Aburam and Dosu, though that didn't last long, and ended with Shino as the victor. The fourth match was between Tamari and Tenten, which ended badly for Tenten, since she went up against a wind mistress with throwing weapons. Match 5 was, in Naruto's opinion, one of the most interesting matches, it was Kin against Kabuto's second teammate, which ended in a draw, when he knocked her out from lack of oxygen, and she knocked him out using her bells. 
The sixth match was also a surprise when Gara, who decided not to use his wand, went up against Rock Lee, with Lee being the first person, aside from Naruto and Kamimuro, to actually hurt Gara with just a jutsu, or at all, though Gara ended up winning when he trapped Lee in a sand cocoon, covering his mouth, so he would pass out from lack of oxygen. After that was probably the most brutal match so far, when Niji Hayuga nearly killed Hanada Hayuga when she insulted him for believing in fate though four of the Kanoha Jonin stepped in before he could kill her. The eighth match ended rather quickly when Sai went up against Yujido and insulted her causing her to kill him quickly, and the ninth match ended almost as fast when Fu called Choji fat and knocked him out while he was in a rage. Well at least there are only nine people left, Harley said trying to be positive, before swallowing the lump in her throat as her name appeared on the board, her opponent being Sakura Haruno. Don't worry Harley, just remember your training and you'll be fine, Harley nodded slowly as she headed down the floor. So how do you think she'll do? Yujito asked looking at Harley, her and Fu had been introduced to the girl before the exams had started and she had to admit that she rather liked the girl. She'll do fine, just watch and see. Naruto smirked as the proctor started the match. Harley swallowed the lump that was growing in her throat as she stood across from her opponent, Sakura Haruno, who, according to Kabuto, was the weakest member of her team, knowing only the basics. Are both fighters ready? The proctor asked getting a nod from the two. Then let the tenth match begin, Hajem, with that the proctor stepped out of the way. This match will be a piece of cake, Sakura said smugly getting questioning looks from the watching crowd. Say that after you win, Harley flew through hand signs as she puffed out her chest, her cheeks bulging, water style. Exploding water shockwave, everyone watched white-eyed as Harley spat out a torrent of water which began filling the arena floor, slowly rising, until both girls were forced to use chakra to stay afloat. Because I don't plan on losing, Harley flew through more seals. Ninja art. Hidden mist jutsu, the arena suddenly became covered in a layer of thick mist, making it impossible for people to see through it. Secret style. Crystallized mirror. For a few moments everything was silent as everyone wondered what was happening inside the fog, before a scream of pain broke the silence and the fog began to lift. See, I told you she'd be fine, Naruto smirked as the fog cleared, showing a panting Harley next to Sakura, who was floating in the water looking like a pincushion. Looks like she's still having some trouble holding that jutsu. Well, it does take some time, not everyone can handle moving at that speed even for a little while. Haku said as the proctor checked on Sakura, declaring that she was alive and naming Harley the winner. When I first made the jutsu, I could only hold that speed for about 5 minutes, and I've had a few years to work on it. Harley's only had one year to work on it. I know, and she did a great job winning this match without showing too much, but we need to test her to find out her limits, since she used an A-rank jutsu, a D-rank jutsu, and a B-rank jutsu, and she's already out of breath, which isn't bad considering her time as a shinobi. Haku nodded in agreement as Harley arrived next to them, while Amui went to face his opponent, Shikamaru Nara. You did good out there Harley, said girl blushed a little as Naruto praised her. Thanks, but I think I need a little more practice with that jutsu, she muttered not looking at her teammates, both of whom were smirking. Well we can worry about that later. Looks like it's finally my turn, Naruto said hopping over the rail, once Amoy was declared the winner of the match, Shikamaru having given up after a few minutes. Alright, it's my turn to shine, Naruto glanced up at Kiba as he jumped into the arena along with his dog. Are both competitors ready, Naruto glanced at the proctor and nodded his head Kiba mimicking him. Very well then, let the final match begin, Hajim. Alright let's go Akamaru, man beast clone, Akamaru jumped onto Kiba's back before transforming into a copy of Kiba, ninja art, all fours jutsu, with that both Kibas charged at Naruto, who had a bored look on his face. This is too easy, Naruto pointed his arm at Kiba, striking Shadow Snake, all of the Kanoha Jonin's eyes widened as a group of snakes shot out of Naruto's sleeve and wrapped around both Kibas, before biting them and dropping them. This match is over, Naruto said turning away from Kiba who was starting to stand up. Where are you going, scared you're going to lose? Kiba taunted, causing Naruto to glance over his shoulder at him. No, like I said, this match is over, everyone looked at him in confusion. Those snakes that just bit you have a special poison in their fangs, in another minute your body will be paralyzed for the next week, so there's no point dragging this out any longer, as he said that Kiba's body began seizing up before he fell to the floor, followed by Akamaru. Well now, this was actually pretty fun Naruto smirked, 
As he stood in line with the other winners of the exam, Harley, Hakugara Ino, Yujiro, Fu, Tamari, Amoi, Shino, Sasuke and Niji. Though now that this is over, I can look for suitable candidates for housing Sanbi and Rakubi, May did want new reliable host for both of them, and I suppose I should find a host for Gobi and Yandi as well, his eyes swept over the competitors, his eyes focusing mainly on Ino. I know Ino has said something about being a host, though I think that was a joke. Shaking his head as I then landed on Tamari, Gara's sister and the oldest of the three, Naruto knew that Gara was very protective of his sister. Though he never showed it while he lived in Suna, he wondered how Gara would feel if he made Tamari a Jinchuriki and awakened her magical core. Well for now finding a host can wait first I have to track down and extract Yandi Gobi and Rakubi from their current host and I can do that during the month break before the third exam with that in mind. Naruto took a number from the box and co, his mom's former student, was passing around, which would tell him his opponent for the third round. Though the only ones he really had to worry about would be Gara Ino or Haku, unless Yujito and Fu decided to use Nibi and Nanabi. Once everyone had taken a number Anko recorded them and made a chart of who would face who before showing to them. Well, this should be fun and amused smirk as he looked over the chart, the first match would be Haku vs Niji, followed by Gara and Sasuke, Ino would fight the third match against Yujito, and Amoi would face Harley in the fourth match, he would face Tamari in the fifth match, and Fu would face Shino in the sixth match. Looks like I might have my work cut out for me after all he smirked again, as the Hokage dismissed them before sinking into the floor, he had a lot to do and very little time to do it. So, it's finally time for the Chunin exam finals, and the Daemon plans to invade this hell, whole Naruto thought as he looked around the packed exam stadium, standing around him were the other finalist, minus the Ichiha who was surprisingly late. There sure are a lot of people here, Naruto turned to Harley, he could hear the nervousness in her voice as she glanced around at the crowd. Try not to worry about them Harley, just remember why we're here, Haku said with a small smile, trying to calm his friend down. He's right, besides once the everything starts Haku's going to apparate you back to Kiri, so you don't get involved, Eno said getting a small sigh of relief from Harley, yes Harley had made her first human kill while at Hogwarts, and yes, she was happy to help her friend out, but she didn't think she was ready to participate in a war. It looks like it's almost time, Gara said glancing up at the cage box, where the Hokage and Medusa, disguised as the Kazakiage, were sitting, before glancing over as Sasuke walked into the arena, looking as if he had already won. Haku, make your match last as long as possible, give us more time to prepare, Naruto muttered to the ice user, completely ignoring the Hokage and the new proctor. I think I can manage that, he smirked as all of the competitors, minus Haku and Niji, left the field. Naruto let out a small sigh as he stood in the competitor's box with the other finalist, everyone waiting for the first match of the exam to begin. It had been a month since the preliminary matches, and in that time a lot had happened, most of it was rather interesting, and other things were pointless. The day after the finals Naruto had headed to Iwa where he managed to track down both the Yanbi and Gobi Jinchuriki. Though after getting both Yanbi and Gobi, he had a small run-in with Abito, which ended up with an entire village being wiped out of existence. When Naruto returned from his hunting trip, which ended up taking a week and a half he tracked Ino and offered her the chance to become the Rakubi Jinchuriki, which she accepted, he then approached Tamari and offered her Gobi, which after a little convincing and discussing with Gara, she accepted. After that Naruto spent the final week training, which was mainly him practicing Senjutsu, Tejutsu and working on his Kenjutsu, aside from that he did have a rather uncommentable reunion with Enko, Yugao and Kakashi, the former literally beating the shit out of him for leaving. Flashback. Naruto coughed up a little blood as he hit a tree in training ground 23, an angry Enko tears of furry in her eyes stomping towards him. Behind her Kakashi and Yugao were watching the interaction with interest. You stupid, ignorant, selfish little brat. Naruto coughed up more blood as Enko hit him again, though he knew he deserved it, which was why he wasn't fighting back. Do you have any idea how worried we've been after you left we spent months looking for you, worried that you might have been taken by someone from Iwa or some other village, that would either kill you or try and turn you into a mindless weapon, she kneed him in the gut before punching him again. I know, and I'm sorry I didn't let you three know I was alright sooner, but I couldn't risk it, he coughed up more blood as Enko hit him again. Why, you think we wouldn't understand that we'd hate you? Enko had tears tracks flowing down her cheeks. Partially, Anko paused in her beating at that. Sigh look I am sorry I didn't tell you guys anything, 
but you have to understand my view on things as well. Then tell us Naruto, we want to believe you, but you need to explain things to us. Yugao said as her and Kakashi approached Naruto and Anko, Naruto was leaning against a tree, panting slowly as Kayubi healed him. Sigh on my third birthday I was found by a man named Avery and one of Medusa's spies they told me about Kayubi and another secret, that Medusa was my mom. The three Jonin looked at him as if he was crazy. She used the DNA of my dad, a man named Voldemort, to fertilize one of her eggs she had put in storage. Since she couldn't give birth after transferring bodies, she snuck into Kanoha and inserted the fertile egg into my birth mother Kashina, whose DNA I gained thanks to Kayubi being inside of her. After I was told this, both Avery and the spy trained me, Avery taught me to use magic, he pulled out his wand at their disbelieving looks, and turned a tree branch into a katana. My dad was a dark wizard, which is part of the reason him and mom got along so well, while Avery was teaching me magic, the spy was teaching me chakra control exorcises and jutsu, such as the shadow clone. I knew you three were loyal to Kanoha, and how much you hate my mom, he glanced at Anko who had a hurt look on her face. That's why I didn't tell you. I didn't want you to hate me after I left. I didn't contact you because I knew if I did you would report it to the old man, and if the council found out where I was, then they would probably have sent you three to try and bring me back. And if you did that, mom would have killed you, and I didn't want that. So, if you've been with Medusa until now, and you're wearing Kiri headbands, does that mean Medusa has taken control of Kiri? Kakashi asked calmly, everything Naruto had told them so far made sense, he remembered the Anbu capturing a man named Avery the night Naruto disappeared, and he was right in his assumption that the council would have sent them to bring him back, which would have ended with their deaths at Medusa's hands. No, while I was with my mom, we learned of other Yuzumaki, one of whom was the leader of the Kiri rebels, so when I was 10, we went to Kiri and using my magic, we were able to subdue Yugura and put my aunt Mei Terumi in power as Mizukage, after that we headed for a Megakur, where I beat some sense into Uncle, Nagato Yuzumaki, who is the leader of a Megakur. Naruto paused and hissed in pain as his ribs, which had cracked, finished knitting themselves back together. After beating some sense back into Nagato, I trained with him in May, learning about Yuzumaki customs, until this year, when I was acceptor to a wizarding school called Hogwarts, which is where I've been, until about a month ago, when the summer holidays started. So your aunt talked you into participating in the Chunin exams? Yugao asked confused, if he was Medusa's son? Then why was he participating under Kiri, instead of that new village Odo, which they had learnt was created by Medusa? No, mom asked that I act as a Kiri shinobi, that way when she attacks Kanoha, I won't be blamed in any way, the three don't intend at that. Yeah, mom decided to attack the village during the Chunin exams, she says it's payback for the way Kanoha treated me, not that I'm complaining. We need to inform Lord Hokage about this, he already knows, the three glanced at Naruto. During my first month at Hogwarts, the old man appeared and talked to me. Before he left I told him that mom planned to attack thought I wasn't sure when it would happen, though since you warned him that mom was in the forest and is in the village, I'm guessing he's figured it out. So what are you going to do Naruto? Are you going to fight in this attack or are you going to sit back and watch? Kakashi asked, his answer would determine their next course of action. I'll tell you what I told the old man, when she does attack, I will be there fighting next to her, repaying that village for 8 years of shit, and if you try to stop me, I will kill you without hesitation, with that Naruto apparated away, flashback end. After that, Naruto had avoided the three, mainly Anko, at all cost, he even had to stun her a number of times since she kept following him. So, what are you planning on doing with Yanbi and Sandy? Naruto let out a small sigh at the question. Sai I plan to find hosts for them, and then use the stone to give you all bodies, just like I promised Naruto chuckled as he watched the match play out. The problem is finding a suitable host for the two, I don't want to give them to just anyone. Why not use that girl from Iowa that had a thing for you, she would be a good host for Yanbi? Naruto blushed a little at that. At the age of 9, Naruto had spent a little time in Iowa mainly to find the Tsuchikage's technique on flying. During that time he had met and befriended one Koritsuchi, the granddaughter of the Tsuchikage. After a few months she had discovered why he was in the village and who he really was, but instead of reporting him, she had agreed to keep his identity secret and be his friend inside Iwa before kissing him for luck. 
And you could always use that villa girl you communicated with as Sanbi's host, she seems reliable from the letters you've exchanged, again Naruto gained a small blush at the thought of the pen pal he made while at Hogwarts, one fleur de la cour, about a month before the Christmas holidays Naruto, had attempted to make contact with a few of the other magical schools in Britain. Bobatin and Durmstrang, he had managed to make contact and became pen pals with two people, Victor Crumb of Durmstrang and Fleur, though he was in contact with Fleur more than Victor, she had even asked him to visit her over the summer, which he planned to do after the Chunin exams, which she accepted. That's actually a good idea, I could give Kuritsuchi Yonbi and have her attend Bobatin with Fleur who can hold Sanbi and have Koro train Fleur over the next year, then use the stone to give all of you new bodies Naruto smirked, it was a great idea, but the question was would it work. Deciding to think on it later, Naruto turned his attention back to the match, which ended with Haku turning Niji into a pincushion. Well, looks like things are about to begin Naruto glanced around at Gara Ino, Tamari, Yujito, and Fu, who all nodded showing they were ready. Well, things sure picked up quickly Naruto smirked as he cut down a Kanoha Shinobi, making his way to his mom, around him Kanoha Shinobi were clashing with Suna and Odo Shinobi, and it appeared that Kanoha was winning, until Nanabi, Nibi, and Ichibi appeared in different parts of the village, destroying everything in their paths. The attack had started off as planned, Gara had humiliated the Ichiha for a bit, before Kabuto used a Jinjutsu to put the spectators in the stands to sleep, minus the shinobi who had caught the Jinjutsu. Though I suppose that's to be expected shaking his head, Naruto apparated away, appearing next to his mother, who was standing across from the old Hokage, yo old man, been a while. Hello Naruto, I see that you were telling the truth about your mother attacking, Medusa glanced at Naruto who shrugged, though I wasn't expecting the attack to happen during the Chunin exam. Yeah, neither was I, but hey, nothing you can do about it. Naruto smirked as he pulled out his wand and pointed it at the old Hokage, stupefy the old man's body froze before he could sow anything, and now we can get what we came here for without any problems. And what exactly did you come here for? Naruto let out a small sigh as him and Medusa turned to see Enko standing behind them, kunai in hand. Sigh we came here for the Ichiha, nothing more nothing less, Naruto as Enko teared up, trying to wipe them away. Though we wouldn't be opposed if you came with us Enko, Naruto gave her a small sad smile, as he moved over to her and touched the curse mark on her neck, destroying it, as the seal vanished, Enko was covered in a white light. Before her body began shrinking to the age of when she got the curse mark. Well that was interesting. Looks like we have another person coming with us. Naruto picked up an unconscious Enko and nodded at his mom before apparating away. So, this is France? Harley asked as she looked around in awe. Her and Naruto were currently in what was considered the most romantic city in the world. Yeah, and if my guess is right, this must be the Delacour mansion, Naruto said as they stopped outside a spectacular two-story mansion, which was surrounded by a large fence, which had muggle-repelling charms on it. Are you sure this is a good idea? Naruto glanced over at the third member of their little group Kuritsuchi, who was now the host of the Yonbi. Of course I am, if she accepts this then you will attend Bobatin and train her. Then next summer I can give the nine bid you their own bodies, if not, then we need to find a new host for Sandy, Naruto said calmly, as the three walked down the drive towards the mansion. It had been a few days since the invasion and things were going rather well, Anko had regained all of her memories from before receiving the curse mark, and remembered that she only received the curse mark, because Danzo had threatened to use her against Medusa, who didn't like that threat, with her memory back in her own magical core unlocked, Anko had agreed to join Naruto, though they sent a covert message to the old man explaining the situation. After that Medusa had taken control of Sasuke's body, making her physically younger than them, which would allow her to attend Hogwarts as well. Once that was done, Naruto had gone back to Iwa and kidnapped Kuritsuchi, before making her the Yombi host, which she agreed to eagerly. I wonder if she will accept Koro said as they stopped in front of the house where two people were waiting on them, as Naruto approached the older of the two smiled and rushed forward pulling Naruto into a hug. Oh Naruto, it is so good to finally meet you in person, the girl, obviously Fleur, said in a French accent, Fleur was a few years older than them, she had silvery blonde hair and dark blue eyes, she was currently wearing a blue skirt and matching blouse. 
It's good to finally meet you as well Fleur, however we have things to discuss if you don't mind Fleur nodded and led them into the house Naruto had written to her the day after the exams and explained his plan a little and if she were honest with herself, she was interested in his proposal. As they moved into the house the younger person, whom Naruto guessed was Fleur's younger sister, stared at them before running of a small blush on her face which caused Naruto to chuckle. Your sister seems to be a little shy, Fleur glanced at her sister, who was watching them from the top of the stairs, her face still a little red. Yes, I think she gained a small crush on you when I showed you the picture you sent me, Fleur blushed at the thought of the picture as well, since it was a picture on Naruto without a shirt on. Now, shall we get down to business, she had led them into the living room where the four of them sat. Alright, well as I have explained in the letter I sent you, we would like you to join our ranks, so to speak, and become, what is known in our culture, a jinchuriki. Naruto held up a small glass orb which held Sandy. Should you accept Kuritsuchi here has agreed to train you as a shinobi for the next year, when the summer arrives, all nine of us, the jinchuriki, will gather, and I will be able to give the biju their own bodies. Alright, but what all isn't it for us, Fleur asked, genuinely curious as to what she would get out of it, aside from being able to relate to Naruto in some way, since if she was honest with herself, she did have a small crush on the boy. Naruto smirked at that, since it was the same thing that Ino, Tamari and Kuritsuchi had asked before becoming Jinchuriki. Now, where would be the fun if I told you that? Naruto smirked at the small pout that appeared on her lips. Alright, but before I accept this I would like something first curious Naruto moved to sit next to her in order to hear what she wanted before his eyes, along with Harley's, widened in surprise as Fleur kissed him on the lip. Kuritsuchi was smirking at the reactions of both the Kyubi Jinchuriki. Harley scowled as she stomped down the street of Kiri headed towards the Mizukage Tower, behind her was Naruto, who was trying to catch up to her. She didn't know why, but for some reason she was furious, the reason, after Fleur kissed Naruto to show she accepted becoming a Jinchuriki, she pulled him in for another kiss, one that dragged them into her room, much to Harley's shock. Why does this bother me so much? Harley wondered as she stormed down the street, people moving out of her way and bowing respectfully as she passed, something she had gotten used to during her time in Kiri. It's because you and my other half's host are connected on a deeper level than you've ever had before, Kyubi said causing her to blink in confusion at that. You and that idiot of a boy are the first humans to hold the same bid you as once, something that no one would have ever dreamed of before. Because of this, you both are changing in ways no one could ever imagine. What do you mean by that? Harley was curious as to why Kyubi was helping her, sure she got along better with the fox than Naruto did but she never really pictured Kyubi to be this talkative about anything. Both of you share our power, something that's not supposed to happen or be possible, because of this you are both changing on a deep level, in a way, both of you are becoming animal-like, Harley blinked at that, it was interesting, but it didn't explain why she was feeling the way she was. Because of this you are both beginning to follow some of your baser instincts, even if it's unconsciously, Naruto is letting a pheromones to attract more mates, the ones being affected the most are other female Jinchuriki, who are experiencing the same change as a result, the change you're going through, is that you're becoming more territorial, your instincts telling you that Naruto is yours, and not to share him until you get him first. What do you mean by that? She asked though she already had an idea as to where Kyubi was going with this, during the Christmas holiday May had talked with her about this, she had explained that the shinobi world was very different, and that the second she put on her headband, she became an adult. I mean that if you want to stop being angry with the idiot, you need to drag him into a room and not leave until he takes you like a dog in heat. Harley's face began to glow like a Christmas light as Kyubi cut the connection between them. Unknown to Harley Naruto was having a similar conversation with Kyubi. Hey Harley come on wait up. The girl who lived glanced over at Naruto before huffing and running to the Mizukage Tower. Letting out a sigh at Harley's reaction, since she had been like that ever since they had returned from France, Naruto shook his head before following after her. He could understand why she was acting like she was, thanks to Kyubi's explanation, though he didn't like it. Finally, you're here Naruto, we've been waiting, Naruto blinked as he entered Mei's office, where he found Harley, Ino, Haku Kamimuro, and Gara leaning against one wall, on the other was Taiya Kin, Karen. Yujito, Fu, and Tamari, sitting in the chair across from Mei, was his mom Medusa, who was now inhabiting the body of Sasuke Chiha. 
Though the body had changed from male to female when she took control of it. Um, what's everyone gathered here for? Naruto asked as he entered the room and closed the door. These arrived for you this morning, which is why I called you all here today, Mei said, handing him a brown envelope with the Hogwarts crest on it, everyone else, including Medusa, holding up their own letters. Looks like Dumbledore sent letters out to a number of new students, he also sent this, she pulled out an old iron teapot. Blinking in surprise, Naruto opened the letter and began reading the things he would need for the upcoming year. After reading the letter and finding he would need a lot of book from someone named Gilderoy Lockhart, Naruto closed his eyes and let out a small sigh. Well, I guess we should start packing, looks like this new year will be here before we know it. Getting a nod from everyone else in the room Naruto left the room in order to start packing. Harley let out a teared sigh as she entered her room at the Mizukage mansion, preparing to finish packing her things, only to stop at the sight of some strange creature sitting on her bed. The creature was small with bat-like ears and large green eyes, it was wearing what looked like a pillowcase with holes for its arms and legs. Harley Potter miss, squeaked the creature causing Harley to blink in surprise. Um, who are you? She asked curiously, she could tell he was something from the magical world, though she didn't know what. Dobby, Miss Dobby the house elf, it bowed to her, its nose touching the floor as it did so. Well not to be rude or anything, but why are you here? Dobby paused as if contemplating how to answer the question. And please don't lie, I'm not in the mood to hear lies, and I can tell if you do. Dobby has come to warn Harley Potter, she must not go back to Hogwarts this year, he said shaking, as if telling her was causing him great pain. And why not? Dobby flinched at the tone in her voice telling him he had better answer. There is a plot miss, a plot to make most terrible things happen at Hogwarts school this year, Dobby knows it miss, has known it for months miss, the elf squeaked. Who's plotting them? The elf shuddered again, prompting Harley to shake her head before pulling out her wand, and giving it a small flick, causing her things to begin flying into her trunk. Look if you're not going to tell me anything useful you might as well leave, I'm not in a good mood. Once all of her things were in her trunk, she sealed the trunk into a scroll and left the room, not seeing the worried look on the elf's face as he disapparated. So what's going on between you and Harley? Medusa asked her son as she followed Naruto down the streets of Diagon Ally. Harley was walking ahead of them with Ron and his sister Ginny, while the rest of the Weasley family walked ahead talking with Kamimuro, Eno and Enko. After getting their things, Medusa leaving Kabuto in charge of Odo, they had all gathered at the gates, before using a port key to get to the burrow, the home of the Weasley family, then from there the used flu powder. Sigh honestly, I'm not sure, all I know is that it has something to do with both of us holding Kayubi, something that isn't even supposed to be possible, Naruto said. Looking at Harley's back, apparently the fact we're both holding Kayubi is changing us on a biological level and making our instincts go haywire or something. I see chuckle how very interesting. Medusa had a smirk on her face that sent a shiver down Naruto's spine. He had seen that look on his mom's face before, and it wasn't always a good sign. You're not going to do anything with this information are you? His mom just gave a small smile, sending another chill down Naruto's spine. Now where would be the fun in telling, Medusa chuckled as she moved over to speak with Yujito and Fu, who were looking around in awe, along with Taiyakin, Karen, Tamari, and another girl from Odo named Gurin. You know telling her was probably unwise, Naruto glanced at Gara, who had a small smirk on his face. Oh shut up, Naruto snapped as he turned away from his brother, as the rather large group entered the bookstore, flourish and blots. Calm down Harley, take a deep breath and calm down Harley told herself as a photographer for the Daily Prophet snap away on his camera like mad. The reason for this was simple, when the group had gotten to the bookstore they found that one Gilderoy Lockhart was having a book signing, after fighting their way in the group found themselves in front of Lockhart, who spotted Harley. After staring at her for a few seconds, a dumbstruck look on his face, he grabbed her and dragged her to the front of the store for a photo shot. Ladies and gentlemen, what an honor, when young Harley stepped in to flourish and blots today to buy her new school books. Magical me, she had no idea that she and her schoolmates would soon be getting the real magical me, he smiled, his teeth gleaming which was annoying as hell, and shook Harley's shoulder. It is my great privilege to announce that I will be taking up the post of defense against the dark arts teacher this year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The crowd clapped loudly, though Naruto noticed the small twitch in Harley's eye. That was annoying. Harley growled as she walked back towards the leaky cauldron with the rest of the group, Ron and Hermione on either side of her. I know mate, but there's nothing you can do about it now, Ron said as he glanced over at Naruto 
who was walking with Kamimuro and Draco Malfoy, whom they had met in Flourish and Blots. What do you think they're talking about? Kamimuro and Malfoy became friends around the end of last year, not close friends, but they did keep in contact, Harley glanced at them. I think Malfoy was asking about some advanced training in one of his letters, so that could be what they're talking about. As Ron nodded, accepting that answer Hermione glanced at Harley, a wondering look in her eyes, which Harley tried to avoid. What are they really talking about? She asked quietly once Ron had moved away from them, causing Harley to glance around nervously. Sai Naruto has been talking about making his own personal group of followers, he plans to build his own village after Hogwarts, but he needs followers to help with that, so he plans to start recruiting while at school, Hermione blinked at that, surprised at Naruto's plan, but he's trying to keep it secret because if people found out about it, they would start saying he's another Voldemort and try to cause problems. I see, that makes sense, though I'm kind of surprised he's asking Malfoy, I wonder who else he plans to ask Hermione took one more glance at the three, before turning her attention back to the girl who lived, well that's one question answered, but what's going on between you and Naruto, you've both seen kind of aloof today? Harley glanced over at Naruto then back at Hermione before letting out a small sigh, she couldn't lie to her, she was her friend and probably the only person she could talk with openly. As the group entered the leaky cauldron, Harley grabbed Hermione and dragged her to her room before explaining everything Kyubi had told her. To say Hermione was stunned was an understatement, she simple sat and stared at Harley as she processed everything she had been told trying to see it all from a logical point of view. That's a lot to take in, Hermione finally said as Harley groaned and fell onto her bed. I know, and I know Kyubi was telling the truth because I can feel it, but, I don't know, I guess I'm nervous is all. I mean I like Naruto and I have thought about what it would be like if we got together, but I never thought it would actually happen, I mean he's my friend. Harley buried her face in her pillow. Unable to help her best friend Hermione simply sat as she tried to process everything Harley had told her. According to her, since both she and Naruto had Kyubi sealed in them, something that wasn't supposed to be. They were both changing, and the other female Jinchuriki were changing as a result, some form of animal instinct. Sai this really is a problem, Hermione said after a few moments of thought. Have you tried talking with the other Jinchuriki about this? No, it's embarrassing. I don't think they see the problem with what's happening, Hermione cocked an eyebrow at that, a small disapproving look on her face. Harley, you should talk to the others, get their opinions and advice, they've had their whole lives to learn to coo with things like this, we've only had a year. Harley glanced at her best friend, before sighing and nodding in agreement, since she was right? All right. I'll talk to them, but not now. That stupid photo shoot drained me, smirking at her friend Hermione, nodded in understanding before heading for the door in order to go get some food for the two of them, silently wondering what would happen this year at Hogwarts. Harley let out a long and tired sigh, as she sat at breakfast with Haku and Hermione, across from her were Kin and Karen, both new Gryffindors looking at her with concern. Are you alright Harley? Karen asked, receiving a nod from the female Kyubi Jinchuriki. Yeah, just teared, the first day of the school year has already begun, and I've already got a detention, she sighed munching on some toast. I still can't believe you flew a car here when you could've just apparated to Hogsmeade and walked up here. That's what Naruto did when he learned about those Kanoha nin that were accepted here, Hermione said, glancing down the table at Rockley, Kiba and Yuzuka and Sakura Haruno, who had become Gryffindors the night before. The previous day, while searching for a compartment to sit in, Naruto, Haku and Hermione had come across the Kanoha Genin, who had been accepted to Hogwarts, Sakura Haruno, along with all the members of Team 8, 9 and 10. When questioned by Naruto, Shikamaru had shown him their acceptance letters, though what pissed him off was Kiba calling him a dirty snake for attacking Kanoha. After knocking Kiba out with a solid punch to the face, Naruto had disapparated from the train and was sitting at the Slytherin table when everyone arrived. Well, we were kind of panicking since the barrier wouldn't let us through, that and I kind of forgot. Haku and Hermione gave Harley a blank look at that. Well it doesn't matter now. Haku said buttering some toast as Ron sat down next to Kin. So do you know what your detentions are going to be? No, McGonagall said we should know by the end of the week though, Ron said grabbing a plaid and piling food on it, though I don't see how it could get any worse. At that moment, everyone looked up as the mail started flying in, before laughing as a great grey owl landed in a bowl in front of Ron, with a red envelope tied to its leg, which caused Ron to pale. 
Looks like you got a letter, Haku said pulling the L out of the bowl and handing Ron the letter, which he shakily took. She sent me a howler, Harley glanced at the letter curiously, wondering what was so bad about a letter, since Ron was almost as pale as nearly headless Nick, the Gryffindor house ghost. I got one from Grand once, it was horrible, said Neville Longbottom, one of their fellow Gryffindors. If you don't open it, it'll only be worse in the end. With shaky hands, Ron slowly opened the letter, causing Harley to cover her sensitive ears, as Mrs. Weasley's voice shrieked out of the letter, drawing the attention of everyone in the Great Hall. Naruto growled as he bit into his breakfast steak, the reason, sitting with the other first-year Slytherins, glaring at him, was Niji Hayuga thought it wasn't a hateful glare, but one of curiosity, and it was pissing him off. It would seem you have an admirer, Naruto glared at his mom, who was sitting next to him causing her to chuckle at her son. You shouldn't worry about it too much, unlike the immature Inuzuka brat the Hayuga at least seems to understand the way of the shinobi world. Sigh I know, but it's still annoying, he knew the Hyuga boy was just curious, but he didn't have to keep watching him eat, he could have been doing something productive like the Yujido, Tamari and Enko, who was adjusting to becoming 11 again, both were talking and interacting with the other first years, including Shino Aburam and Tenten, who became a Slytherin surprisingly. Well, on the bright side we only have to see him at mealtimes and in the common room, Naruto let out another sigh at Draco's words. I know but still Naruto stopped and glanced at the Gryffindor table as a loud shrieking erupted from the letter in Ron's hands. What the hell is that? Naruto covered his ears along with Yujito, who was glancing down at him, both feeling a pain of sympathy for Harley since she was right in the blast zone. For five minutes, the entire hall was silent as the letter bellowed itself hoarse at Ron before bursting into flames, at which point everyone began about what had just happened or laughing at Ron who was as pale as the ghost as he sunk beneath the table in an attempt to hide. Okay, so what the hell was that? Naruto glanced at Draco who was snickering. It's called a howler, it a letter that yells whatever is written on it in the user's voice. If you don't open it fast enough, then it explodes, and the voice yells even louder. He chuckled again, since he didn't like Ron. Over the course of the day, all Naruto heard was people talking and laughing about the howler, which was really starting to get on his nerves. The only good thing was that it had gotten Harley's mood to lighten enough for her to talk to him again, without the angry glare she had since France. Well that sure was an interesting first day back. Naruto said as he walked towards the first self-defense class of the year, with Harley Hermion, Haku and Kamimuro, Draco and Ron, both glaring at each other. Yeah, I just hope Nagato has something new for us to work on, as they approached the other second years, they were meet with a rather interesting surprise, standing on either side of Nagato were Itachi, who was calmly observing the class, and Kakashi Haddock, who lazily peering over his book. Well, this is new. Haku smirked once they arrived with the others, before ducking to avoid being smacked upside the head by Ino. Good morning class and welcome back to your first self-defense class. Now that you are second years and have some of the basics down, we are going to be upping you training this year. In order to help me handle so many students, Professor Dumbledore has brought in some people to help me out. Nagata said, motioning at Itachi and Kakashi. Hello, my name is Itachi Ichiha. I'm a Joan of Omegakur, Itachi said with a nod, getting a fist bump from Naruto and small nervous greetings from everyone else not of Naruto's group. Yo, I'm Kakashi Haddock, Jonan of Kanahagakur, nice to meet you, Kakashi said glancing back at his book before moving to the side to avoid a pair of kunai from Ino, Harley, and Hermione, who knew what the book he was reading was about, having found Haku's copy, reading it, then burning it in front of him. For this year, I'll be splitting the classes up into three groups based on the results of your training from the previous year. Nagato waved his wand causing three blackboards to appear. I have split you all up into one of three categories, speed, strength and power. Now I want all to find your names and stand behind Kakashi, Itachi or myself, depending on your placement. For the next 10 minutes everyone tried to find out where they were to be placed once everyone knew they all gathered behind their assigned teacher, those who were built more for speed all stood behind Itachi, those built for strength stood behind Kakashi, and those for power stood with Nagato. Once everyone was sorted the three teachers took the students under their control and moved to separate parts of the field in order to explain things to their students. So what the hell's going on Nagato? 
Why are Kakashi and Itachi here? Naruto asked once the other groups were out of earshot. Calm down Naruto, it's not as bad as it seems. Naruto gave him a blank look, which was matched by Harley, Ino and Gara. After the events that happened at the Chunin exams, I was contacted by Saratobi, we talked, I explained what I could about Itachi, Medusa, Kiri and you, which he calmly listened to, Nagato said as if talking about the weather. After our talk he cleared Itachi of his crimes, at which point I explained about my idea for the second years and above in order to help me out he sent Kakashi, who has a secondary task of keeping an eye on the Kanoha Genin. So, what exactly is this idea that you mentioned? Harley asked, hoping to change the subject for now at least. As I said, over the past year I observed all of you and have split you up accordingly, these groups are split up based on your strengths, those who showed greater speed, then others were placed under Itachi, who will work on increasing their speed, those who showed more strength, then others were placed under Kakashi, and those who showed they were more well-rounded, were left with me. The four Jinchuriki glanced at the remaining students, out of everyone those remaining were Neville, Draco, Hermione, both paddle twins, Hannah Abbott, Susan Bones, Daphne Greengrass and Tracy Davis, all of whom were watching the discussion in confusion. So all of the students here have the most potential to be well-rounded in any area, Gara clarified, getting a nod from Nagato, who was impressed they caught on so quickly. Exactly, though today is more of an explanatory session, that way they can ask questions should they have any, the four Jinchuriki nodded in understanding. So are you going to be teaching them Jutsu this year? Ino asked curiously. No, this year is more about learning to use chakra, because of you four, everyone in the castle has begun showing signs of having a chakra core. The four averted their eyes from the older shinobi. As such, everyone in the castle has is going to be learning the basics of chakra, similar to academy students, since everyone has already had a year of training. The first few months will be to learn about chakra and how to us it. After the Christmas holidays we will be showing them how to use chakra to enhance their bodies. So Itachi's going to work on speed, Kakashi will work on strength, and you'll be helping them become well-rounded in both speed and strength, Naruto summed up getting a nod from Nagato. Then what are we going to be doing this year? You four will be helping me. Everyone blinked at that before Naruto turned and began walking away. Where are you going? To get one of the Hayugas, I want to confirm your theory, Naruto said before shooting up towards the castle. Well, Nagato-sensei was right. Naruto had a small twitch as he stood on top off the tallest tower with Harley, Medusa, and Niji the last of whom had his Byakugan activated, and was glancing around at all of the students. Somehow, all of the students in second year and above have a chakra core, and all of the first year students show signs of developing one. But how? Medusa chuckled at Harley's question, since it was one she had trying to figure out since she first met Voldemort. It's quite simple really, the three turned to face Medusa, from all of the research I've been able to do, it would appear that magic and chakra are in nature. Though chakra is a more dense and unrefined form of energy, which is why it's not seen outside of the elemental nations, then why is it that chakra is starting to appear in wizards? Medusa smirked at that. It's because of you and the other Jinchuriki. The three gave her a confused look. Sai Jinchuriki are always releasing a small amount of chakra that is denser than any normal shinobi. Back in the elemental nations this chakra is absorbed by the earth and nature around us, here it's absorbed by wizards, who, while producing their own magic in small quantities, slowly absorb magic from the earth as they grow. So is that where muggle-born witches and wizards come from? Medusa nodded at Harley's sharp mind. Exactly, most humans aren't born with magical cores, which is where muggle-borns come in. They have a magic core which is slowly absorbing magic around them until they turn 11, which is when their core is big enough to produce magic on its own, thought they still absorb magic, just not as much or as fast as they did before. Naruto grabbed his head. He hated when his mom began explaining complex stuff like this and expected him to grasp it with ease. I don't really care. I'm just pissed that Nagato was right about this, Naruto said stomping off as the other three shared a glance before following him. Niji asking Medusa more questions, he was actually curious about the snake Sanon's knowledge, one the subject of magic and chakra. The end.